your own channel vedantu neat english this is baswaraj sir your biology master teacher good evening i hope everyone is safe and sound doing extremely well so students before we start anything quickly let me know in the chat if my voice is audible to all of you and the presentation behind me is visible to each and every one of you quickly let me know in the chat if my voice is audible and the presentation behind me is visible to all of you quickly let me know in the chat if my voice is audible and the presentation behind me is visible to each and every one of you let me just check in the phone once one second the ad is coming <laughs> yes yes we are audible and visible amazing yes 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 so students while we wait for everyone to join let's wait 2 minutes for everyone to join the class while we wait let me ask you a simple question who is the father of genetics quickly let me know in the chat who is known as the father of genetics all of you will tell sir it's gregor mendel yes now who is the father of modern genetics can anyone tell me in the chat who is the father of modern genetics not the old one old school da old school mendel and everything people ans no who is the father of modern genetics so with that being said let let me see in the chat who can answer this question if you're able to answer the question quickly like the video right now smash the like button right now and if you know the answer let me know in the comment section who is known as the father of modern genetics and also let me know also who is also known as the father of experimental genetics also let me know in the chat no th morgan is the father of experimental genetics yes but who is known as the father of modern genetics that i'll tell you when we are learning the class because it is going to come up so before everyone before we start the class everyone mark your attendance by liking the video and sharing the video and also subscribing to the channel yes yes so students can we start can we start the most wanted or the most awaited chapter principles of inheritance so if everyone is excited as i am if everyone is ready to learn this chapter understand every single line of ncert every single formula now when i say formula because from this chapter usually you can expect some form of numericals so in today's class i will be giving you a lot of formulas so i want everyone to note down the formulas but the usage of formulas we will do it in the separate session so students do not worry i will be conducting a session gopika ma'am and i will be conducting a session on all the numericals of biology where will be including the numericals from this chapter but in today's video i'll make sure you understand the formula and understand the theory behind it so if everyone is ready if everyone is ready quickly like the video and fire emoji or green hearts in the chat because we are going to start the principles of inheritance so first of all everyone knows everyone knows this particular statement that the entire chapter that is principles of inheritance belongs to a branch of science this chapter that is principles of inheritance and variation it belongs to a particular chapter or particular what do i say branch of science called as your genetics it belongs to a branch of science called as genetics so what is genetics so students listen to me very carefully make down write down the notes which are i'm supposed to give you today write down the notes and also understand the but this chapter So students what is genetics genetics is actually a branch of science it is a branch of science that deals with that deals with inheritance or heredity and variation as well as variation so the genetics is a particular unit or particular branch of science which mainly deals with the heredity and variation now one question arises all of you might be thinking sir what is this heredity and what is this variation do not worry today i'll be going all the way from the basics all the way from the what do i say class 10th level basics to all the way to the advanced level that is all the chromosomal pedigree analysis every single thing in one video so if you do not know anything in this chapter you have zero knowledge in this chapter watch the video till the very end everyone who's watching the session watch the video till the very end if you want to be a topper in this particular chapter okay so what is heredity can anyone tell me in the chat what is the meaning of heredity 
और इनहेरिटेंस हेरिडिटी और इनहेरिटेंस लेट मी राइट ऑन इनहेरिटेंस स्टूडेंट्स हेरिडिटी और इनहेरिटेंस पर्टिकुलरली यार इनहेरिटेंस इनहेरिटेंस इज एक्चुअली अ प्रोसेस इट इज एक्चुअली अ प्रोसेस इन विच जेनेटिक इंफॉर्मेशन इट इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच जेनेटिक कैरेक्टर्स आर पासड ऑन फ्रॉम पेरेंट टू अ ऑफस्प्रिंग लेट मी राइट डाउन फॉर यू इट इज अ प्रोसेस इट इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच इन विच जेनेटिक कैरेक्टर्स जेनेटिक कैरेक्टर्स आर पास्ट फ्रॉम पेरेंट टू द ऑफ स्प्रिंग दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एयर इन दिस कॉल्ड एज इनहेरिटेंस ना वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस सर लेट मी अंडरस्टैंड मी टीच यू द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस मीनिंग इज वेरी वेरी सिंपल दैट इज लाइक बिगेट्स लाइक Now, what is the meaning of like begets like? Very simple again. That is, imagine we have Arun. Arun is there. Arun has a similar eyes like his father. Arun has similar nose just like his mother. That is, the character is passed from the parent to the offspring. Okay, that is called as inheritance. The other beautiful example, the the most the simplest of example is. a cat giving birth to a kitten or a dog giving birth to a puppy can can in nature will there be a process in which can can it ever happen that a cat is giving birth to a dog no can a human give birth to a parrot no a human will give birth to a human baby that is called as inheritance that is called as inheritance that is process in which genetic characters or traits are passed from the parent to the offspring yes now inheritance is the process heredity is the uh, heredity is the what do i say the definition wise we say heredity both meaning is same both meaning is same meaning is same okay now students one more thing i can ask you let's say uh, sweetie for example okay sweetie has uh, eyes like her father yes let's simple example if sweetie has eyes just like her father but the nose is like mother that is parent to offspring can there be certain small changes you will be like, yes sir we are not exactly copies of our parents yes we are not exactly copies of parents that is we have certain differences yes students we have certain differences from the parent to the offspring we will have certain differences right this differences or changes this differences or changes from the parent to the offspring between the two siblings that is brother and sister or a sister and sister can have certain changes those changes or differences are called as what they are called as variations they are called as what variations they are called as variations now students if i ask you a question do you see this type of variations in a sexual reproduction tell me quickly in the chat do you see certain variations in the case of your a sexual reproduction the answer would be obviously no sir because in the case of a sexual reproduction there is involvement of a single parent yes so there is no gametic fusion in a sexual reproduction so very less variation very less variation but these type of variation these type of variations is mainly found in the case of sexual reproduction in the case of sexual reproduction why because in the case of sexual reproduction there is fusion of gametes male gamete and female gamete are fusing together so there is a higher chance of variation that is the basics of this chapter that is inheritance and variation so with that being said can we start the chapter with some basic terminologies more yes sir because students if you do not understand the basic terminologies when we go to the higher concept when i'll directly tell you homozygous dominant heterozygous recessive you will not understand 
so before we start the entire chapter i want each and every student of mine to know the basics if you do not know the basics in this chapter it gets very tricky later on so let's understand the basics and let's build up the concept that is when the foundation is good the building will sustain because when you get the numericals and if you do not know how to identify which is homozygous dominant in a numerical will you be able to solve the numerical no so students you need to know the basics only when you know the basics you will be able to solve the problems okay okay yes now first basic difference first basic or the foundation is your difference between difference between character as well as trait what is the difference between a character because in this chapter we'll be uh, we'll be using words like seven different characters mendel used seven different characters he used 14 different traits but what is this character and character is nothing but it is a feature of an individual what is a character character is nothing but it is a feature of an individual it is a feature of an individual now when i say feature is it supposed to be phenotypic or genotypic answer is very simple again so when we talk about character when we talk about character we mainly talk about phenotypic property we mainly talk about phenotypic property phenotypic property now students if you do not know what is phenotype genotype don't worry i will be telling you what is phenotype phenotype what is genotype also in this today's video because if you are watching this video for the first time you need to understand the chapter okay now can can anyone in the chat give me a simple example can anyone in the chat give me a simple example for your character the simple example for a character is nothing but height height of an organism yes height of an organism color of an organism color of a flower color of a flower color of a flower that all of this is a character but then what is a trait then trait is nothing but a inherited character what is a trait listen to me very carefully students this can get confusing here but example will clear you clear the concept what is a trait trait is nothing but it is an inherited character it is an inherited character or inherited character plus variance that is very important plus variance i'll give you an example you'll understand wait 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 let me tell you the example then you'll understand very carefully the example is very simple here again that is here we spoke about height of a plant now did we tell is it tall plant or is it a short plant did we discuss no that tall plant or short plant that is what is called as a trait so what is the trait here we tell tall or dwarf all that is a trait now here again i told you color of a flower are we mentioning is the color of the flower white brown red violet no when we mention the color that becomes a trait that is red color white color or violet color now do you understand what is the difference between a character and a trait a character is a feature of an individual that is can be height of an individual color of an individual but a trait very carefully a trait is a inherited character plus variants now what is the meaning of variants here that is the variants of a height tall and dwarf clear to all of you is this clear to all of you clear yes students now the next one is very simple students you might be understanding sir we know all of this we know all of this sir why are you teaching all of this students when you only when you know the basics only when you know the basics like this then only you will understand the concept later on so students there are so many students out there studying in class 12th they still don't know what is the difference between a gene and allele but that confusion i'm here to clear you all the way from the basics now next one is what is the difference between 
a gene and a allele. Now, can anyone tell me? All of you might have heard about gene. So, this gene, that gene, this gene is present here, this gene is present there. But then, what exactly is a gene? What exactly is a gene? Students, listen to me very carefully. All of you know the DNA. All of you know. All of you know DNA. Yes, sir. All of us know deoxyribonucleic acid. It is right. All of you know DNA. Now, in this particular DNA, in this particular DNA, if you take a small segment like this, a small segment of this particular DNA, that becomes a gene. That becomes a gene. Gene is the what is the gene then? Gene is the smallest segment of the DNA. Smallest segment of DNA. Now, what is the other definition of gene which you already learnt in your class 10th? Gene is the unit of inheritance. Gene is the unit of inheritance. All of you know that. Now, what is an allele then, sir? What is an allele? How many of you know what are twins? You know twins, right? All of you know what is a twins. Yes, all of you know what are twins? All of you know twins? There is uh, like uh, Ramesh and Suresh. Alleles are like just like twins. Alleles are just like twins. That is, a particular gene, a particular gene will have two different alternating forms. A gene will have what? Two different alternating form. So, what is an allele? Allele is nothing but alternative, alternative form of a gene. What is a allele? Allele is nothing but an alternative form of a gene. So, every single gene will have one alternative form. But if I can ask you a question in the chat right now. Do we always have two alleles? Can anyone tell me in the chat? Is it always? Is this point universal? That is, one gene will have two alleles. Is it universal? The answer should be no. Because when we learn about your uh, co-dominance, when we learn about co-dominance, we learn a concept of multiple allelism. There, in multiple allelism, one gene, one gene will have more than one allele. More than one allele, that is multiple allelism, which we'll be learning later on. In the case of blood grouping, we have three different alleles. Remember that. Remember that point. Okay. And remember, alleles here mostly in case of Mendelian, Mendelian, they occur in pair. Occur in pair here. They occur in pair. Only in the case of Mendelian genetics. Only in the case of Mendelian genetics, they occur in pair. But there is a concept of multiple allelism, which I'll be teaching you later on. Multiple allelism, which I'll be teaching you later on. Clear? Yes. The next one, the next one is also very simple. What is the difference between a phenotype and genotype? Phenotype is basically the morphology of an organism and genotype is the genetic constituents of an organism. Very simple. What is phenotype? Phenotype is the morphology. How does the plant look from outside or how does the organism look from the outside? That is phenotype. Then what is the genotype? The genotype is how it looks from the inside. That is, the genetic constituents is called as genotype. Clear? That is your genotype. Now, this is where many students go confusing again. Sir, what is the difference between homozygous and heterozygous? Very simple. If the two alleles, if the two alleles are like the identical twins, if the two alleles are like identical twins and you cannot tell them apart, like which is Ramesh and which is Suresh, you cannot tell who is Ramesh and who is Suresh. That is called as homozygous. That is called as homozygous. So, in the case of homozygous, the two alleles, the two alleles are similar. The two alleles are similar. But in the case of heterozygous, but in the case of heterozygous, the two alleles look dissimilar or different. The two alleles look 
different. So can you, can you give me an example? Easy example. That is, in case of homozygous, we can have capital T, capital T or small t or small t. Do they look alike? Yes, sir. But in the case of heterozygous, in the case of heterozygous, we can write capital T and small t. Yes, capital T and small t. That is called as heterozygous condition. That is called as what? Heterozygous. Clear? Yes, this one shot will be enough. But in this one shot, I will not be discussing a lot of numericals. In this one shot, I will not be discussing a lot of numericals. I will be giving you a formula. Then I will make a separate session. Because I know numericals will require a lot of doubt clearing, right? It will clear a lot of doubt clearing. So if I keep on doing doubt clearing right now, this session will not end. So for all your doubts in numericals, I will make a separate session for numericals. Where we will be discussing all the possible numericals from this chapter okay where i'll be telling you where i'll be discussing all the different types of i'll be discussing all the different different types of numericals with a formula sheet is that okay with all of you is that okay with all of you yes students now difference between allele and gene i told once again gene is a, a small segment of dna and a gene has two different forms like twins we have twin a and twin b yes that is called as your allele twins Okay. Now, what is dominant and what is recessive? Again, I'll not spend a lot of time on this. Dominant allele is an allele which can express itself even in the presence of alternative allele. What is it? A dominant allele? Dominant allele is an allele which can express even in the presence of another allele. Now, what is recessive allele? Recessive allele is an allele which is like the quiet kid in the class. Who will not talk when everyone is around? Yes. He will only talk when no one is there. Right? That is a recessive allele. Recessive allele will only express when the dominant allele is absent. But who is dominant allele? Dominant allele is the kid in the class who will keep on screaming all the time. Who will keep on screaming, who will keep on shouting in the class. That is a dominant allele. Who will express all the time. Okay? Who will express all the time. Nice. Now, from here, we will start the proper chapter. Till here, any doubt you can ask me, students. Any doubt till here you can ask me. I am ready to clarify any form of doubt. Doubt if you have till now. If you do not have any doubt till now, it's fine. Because everything was basic till now. And all the different terminologies have been cleared. Yes, all the different terminologies have been cleared. Now, now we talk about Mendel. Who was Mendel? What did he do? What was his work on? Yes. Can we start? Can we start? Yes. If I can start, I want some green hearts in the chat because I'll be making you write some very important points now. Very, very important points which I want in everyone's books. In everyone's book. Okay. The first point. Gregor Mendel. Mendel was born. This is not in your NCRT, but this extra information. Mendel was born on July. Mendel, Mendel was born on July 22nd, 1822. Okay. 1822. July 22nd, 1822. Extra information. If you want to remember, you can remember, but that is not very important. That is not very important. But what is important? What is important is, what did Gregor Mendel work on? What did he work on? Did he work on, did he work on cat? Did he work on Drosophila? Did he work on plants? If plants, which type of plant? That is very important. So Gregor Mendel worked on your pea plant, which you put in your uh, paneer butter masala. You put no paneer butter mutter paneer that mutter that uh, that small small green color. That is your garden pea. So Mendel worked on garden pea, also called as your Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum. Oh my god, mistake, mistake. One second, students. Small yes. Pisum sativum. Yes, he worked on Pisum sativum. Now, students, how many years did he work on? For example, you are studying for need from past one year, two year, three year, four years. Okay. But Gregor Mendel, did he study for one or two years? No. Gregor Mendel experiment was actually for 
सेवन लॉन्ग इयर्स ही वर्क ऑन योर गार्डन पी फॉर सेवन इयर्स ही वर्क फॉर होमनी इयर्स सेवन टोटल इयर्स सेवन इयर्स सेवन इयर्स द डेट अगेन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द डेट अगेन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दट इज एटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स टू एटीन सिक्सटी थ्री एटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स टू एटीन सिक्सटी थ्री फॉर सेवन लॉन्ग इयर्स ग्रेग मेंडल वर्क डॉन योर ग्रीन प्लांट दट इज पी प्लांट बट वॉट वॉज इज वर्क डिड यू फार्म द प्लांट्स एंड ईट द प्लांट्स नो वॉट वॉज इज एक्चुअल वर्क लाइक इफ आई कैन इफ आई इफ आई कैन टेल यू योर वॉट्स एंड क्रिक वर्क डॉन डी एन ए यस बट वॉट वॉज इज एक्चुअली वर्क वॉज इज वर्क वॉज कॉल्ड एज योर हाइब्रिडाइजेशन एक्सपेरिमेंट his work was called as what his work was called as hybridization experiment hybridization experiment now what is this hybridization experiment i'll tell you in the next 5 minutes what is this hybridization experiment i'll tell you in the next 5 minutes but right now you should know greg mendel worked for 7 years from 1856 to 1863 he worked on hybridization experiment there are main three steps in hybridization experiment that also we'll discuss in late detail later on but before that all of you should know how many different characters did he include in his experiment did he take one character two character three character or four in total students in total he took seven pair of seven pair of contrasting traits seven pair of contrasting traits that is in total of 14 traits was taken by greg mendel 14 traits and seven characters how many in total of seven pair of contrasting traits that is in total 14 traits 14 traits and he took uh, he took into consideration seven different characters very important line it can come as a question seven different characters now apart from that did he take any random plant did greg mendel take any random plant right he took up he, he went to the garden did he take this plant is like no i will do experiment on this he did he go on a walk did he go on a walk and he took random plant from here and there yes random plant no greg mendel did not take any random type of plant greg mendel actually took a something called as pure breed line what did he take he took something called as pure breed line sir why only seven because that was most distinctive seven was more viable easy to see okay clear he took how many 14 he took in total of 14 true breeding lines now students a question come a question can come in your mind sir what is the meaning of what is the meaning of two breed lines what is the meaning of this true breeding lines i have heard it somewhere but i cannot recall so students this true breeding lines are the lines that is it is a type of plant it is a type of plant which has undergone only and only self pollination it has undergone what it has undergone repeated repeated self pollination repeated self pollination repeated self pollination that is your true breeding line that is true breeding line how many did it take 14 did it take now tell me in the chat if it is a true breeding line will it be homozygous or will it be heterozygous a question is very simple question is very simple that is did he take uh, if it is repeated self pollination is it going to be homozygous heterozygous it is going to be homozygous it is going to be homozygous if it was a heterozygous if it was a heterozygous then it would not be true breeding if it would have been heterozygous it is not true breeding that is it is homozygous in nature it is homozygous in nature now how was mendel different everyone was doing experiments in biology but mendel was very different because he used mathematics and statistics into biology so what did he use he used mathematics maths and statistics in 
biology in biology now apart from that did he take a small sample size see imagine he worked for 7 years imagine he worked for 7 years will he take a small sample size or large sample size obviously students he will take a very large very large sample size very large sample size very large sample size clear these were the different properties which Mendel included. That is, we worked on Pison sativum for 7 years, 1856 to 1863. He, he used 7 pair of contrasting traits. The 7 pair of contrasting traits basically in which correlates to 14 different traits and 7 characteristics. He used 14 true breeding lines that is repeated self-pollination. And he used mass and statistics into biology and large sample size was used large sample size was used now just because he used large sample size his work gets more credibility his work gets more credibility okay question can come from here that is what are the what are the different characters did he take in what are the different characters the different characters were taken up by him was stem height flower color flower position pod shape pod color as well as seed shape and seed color seed shape and seed color this particular table as well as this particular diagram one question has come as previous year neat question you might be expecting you can get a very difficult question from this chapter yes you will get but you can also get very very easy questions from this chapter one more type of question we can expect from this particular table is which of the following are a dominant character which are recessive character there is a small trick for to remember this i did not make this trick i found this trick on the internet that is your gravity that is your gravity what is g green is more dominant yes green is more dominant here round is more dominant in seed shape axial is more dominant V is your violet is more dominant, violet flower is more dominant. I is inflated or inflated or it's given here as what? Inflated or full. Inflated or full is more dominant. T that is your, the T stands for your tall plant. Tall plant is more dominant and finally Y. The Y stands for your here yellow seed color. Yellow is more dominant yellow is more dominant now students they can ask you a question based on they can ask you a question based on which of the following which of the following trait is more dominant small trick to remember all the dominant traits so please remember this one okay please remember this this one very easy to remember all of you can remember this now yes i i did not make a uh, disclaimer i didn't make this trick i didn't make this trick someone in the internet made this trick but i'm using the trick to teach all of you but all of you know the trick now. Yes? Okay. All of you can remember this table. See, I, this I cannot teach you. See, this one I cannot teach you. You should know on your own. I can only tell you what is important in this part. There is no concept here. But you need to... Okay. One simple question for all of you. Is being lucky actually important? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. Is being lucky actually important in your... You don't need you know, need examination or in your research or anywhere. Is luck important? Is there any lag? Students, is there a small lag? Tell me in the chat. Is there a small lag? Check, 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 check. Students, is there a lag? Yes, there is a lag. Yes, is there a lag or no? It's fine, okay. Is luck, does luck play a role somewhere? If you say no, okay. But I personally believe and even Mendel was actually a little bit lucky. Imagine, you know, imagine if you're going to your exam, today is May 5th. Morning of May 5th, you studied one concept, you solved some 100 questions. Morning, early morning, you woke up and you solved some 50 questions. Imagine out of the 50 questions, 25 actually came in your examination. Easy marks. Yes, so lucky is actually important. 
सो कैन आई कॉल मेंडल ऑल्सो समवॉट लकी मेंडल वॉज समवॉट लकी एंड अनलकी एट द सेम टाइम he was unlucky because his work did not get recognition that we'll discuss later on but was he lucky the answer is yes why was he lucky sir do you think mendel only worked on your pea plants no mendel actually worked on multiple different plants example is your hawkweed and beans he also worked on hawkweed hawkweed and beans Mendel also worked on hawkweed, hawkweed and beans, but did he obtain the same result which he obtained in pea plant? No, he did not obtain the same result. No, same result. No, same result. Now imagine, imagine if Mendel did not use the pea plant and he actually used hawkweed or beans in the starting only. Did we? Would we have Mendel in genetics? No. So luck is actually very very important. luck is also very important to some extent that is later on we got to know later on we got to know the seven characters right the seven characters which we spoke about the seven character we spoke about actually lie on four different chromosomes four different chromosomes four different chromosomes four different chromosomes that is 1 4 5 and Seven. Imagine if all the characters which he took, if they were present in the same chromosome, would he find such a recombination? No. So he was so lucky. He was so lucky that the pea plant which he took, the seven character characters which he took, were present on four different chromosomes. So trust me, students, luck is important, and I wish for all my students. I wish for my, all my students. You have all the luck in the world. Okay, you have all the luck in the world. Now one question arises. I saw in the chat before. Why did he take pea plant? Like, what was the reason? What was the reason to take pea plants? I have written some points. Let's read the points. Very easy. Nothing to understand the concept here, but very simple statements. Okay. First one is easy to grow and maintain. Yes, very easy to grow and maintain. doesn't require extraordinary you know uh, you have to keep on feeding it keep on watering it all the time no normal plant annual plant with short life cycle that is 2 to 3 months if the if the life cycle is very short more progenies and more experiment can be done the next one is exhibits a variety of visible characters with contrasting traits yes that is a sheep can, a, a seed shape can be round or wrinkled seed color can be green or yellow contrasting characters yes produces bisexual flower so you do not have to go finding the for cross pollination self fertilization for fertilizing plants and hence mating can be controlled easily they are self fertilizing also possible to conduct cross pollination very easily that is emasculation capping bagging can be done very easily here and also produces a large number of seeds if it produces a large number of seeds we can take the seeds and cultivate the next pea plant very easily i do i believe there should be no doubt in this paragraph no no doubt in this paragraph here no concept here this is the particular concept i asked starting this was the question which i asked in the starting who is known as the father of genetics father of genetics is your george johan mendel the modern genetics is your batson and the experimental genetics is th morgan experimental genetics is th morgan it is the same th morgan who coined the term recombination linkage and is the same th morgan who worked on drosophila melanogaster okay which will be learning later on which will be learning later on so students quickly tell me in the chat we are coming to the final concepts now we are coming to mono hybrid cross now before we start the mono hybrid cross quickly let me know in the chat quickly let me know in the chat what are the three steps in hybridization the first step in hybridization is selection of plants the first step here is selection of plants selection of parents or plants selection of parents 
Now, what type of parents are used here? That is pure breeding or true breeding lines. True breeding lines are considered here. The second point here is cross pollination. Is cross pollination which includes one gene or it can have two gene. One gene is your mono hybrid cross, two gene is your dihybrid cross. The third step, the third step is selfing of F1 plants. Selfing of F1 plants. Those are the three different steps in the case of your hybridization. Three different steps in the case of hybridization. Clear? Now, students, quickly let, let me know in the chat. Can we start mono hybrid cross now? Can we start? Any doubt till now? Any doubt you can ask me in the chat right now. If there is no doubt whatsoever, let's start with the inheritance of one gene. Yes, ready? Ready? Uh, is everyone ready? That is the mono hybrid cross. Very simple, very easy. Very simple, very easy, but when the question comes, very difficult, not able to solve. Yes, the students, concept is very easy again. But when the question comes, you will be like, oh my god, what is happening? The students, in this chapter, I suggest you, even today's, after today's class, just after today's class, I want every student of mine to attempt one test, to attempt one test, which is going to be in the description. Promise? So, attempt the test. Solve the PYQs, solve the questions, you are good to go. Just by watching this lecture, not enough. Okay? Clear? Now, the first one is your mono hybrid cross. Is your mono hybrid cross. Mono hybrid cross. All of you know this? All of you know this? Yes? Mono hybrid cross. Very simple. Let me draw the cross. All of you draw the cross with me. Any doubt, I will clear later on. Yes, what is the difference between test cross and self cross? I will tell you. Very easy. Very easy. Okay. Very easy. Don't worry. Bala. When the test cross comes, I will tell you that time. Okay. Now, first one step is what? The first step in hybridization is selection of parents. Yes. The first step here is Selection of parents. We take a pa first parent as homozygous. Homozygous. Let me write this side. The first parent is homozygous dominant. Is homozygous dominant that is going to be your tall plant here homozygous dominant that is tall plant so parent is going to be capital T capital T crossing it with homozygous recessive homozygous recessive that is going to be your dwarf plant that is your small t, small t. Homozygous means the two alleles. Homozygous means the two alleles are same to same. Yes, two alleles are same to same. The next one is formation of gametes. Formation of gametes, that is capital T and small t. Then you have a cross. The cross is nothing but your capital T, small t. This one is your F1 generation. Now, just tell me in the chat, is this F1 homozygous dominant or is it heterozygous dominant? The F1 here is heterozygous dominant. Heterozygous dominant. It is heterozygous dominant and this F1 generation will be tall plant. F1 generation will be tall plant. The next step is selfing of F1. The next step is 
सेल्फिंग ऑफ एफ वन दट इज कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी क्रॉसिंग विथ कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी यस विच विल रिजल्ट इन द इजिएस्ट मेथड द इजिएस्ट मेथड टू फाइंड एफ टू इज विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ बॉक्स कॉल्ड एस पुनेट स्क्वायर एंड स्टूडेंट्स ट्रस्ट मी दिस पुनेट स्क्वायर इज अ पी वाई क्यू Nothing. They're not asking you what is inside P Punnett Punnett square. They're asking you how do you determine the F two generation Punnett square. Very simple. Here, male, female. That's going to be your capital T, small t, capital T, small t. Yes. Gametes. You can produce gametes here. Capital T. Capital T. Capital T small t, capital T small t, and capital T small t. Yes, very simple again. Next step here is nothing but phenotypic ratio. Phenotypic ratio is what here? Three is to one. That is tall plant, tall plant, tall plant. Even though it is heterozygous dominant, it is that is the capital T is more dominant over recessive one, which is small t. So dominant trait will be expressed here. Three is to one. What is your genotypic ratio here? What is the genotypic ratio? Is one is to two is to one. So one is homozygous dominant one. Two are heterozygous dominant. That is two. And next one is this one separate one is oh, small t small t right? Small t small t. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Small t small t. That is your homozygous recessive it is homozygous recessive in nature any doubt here this is very easy all of you know this particular point from all the way from your class 10th from class 10th all of you know this now one question can come from here is the punnet was which country does he belong from which country did he belongs from the answer is british he was he is from london okay he was a british genetics okay see again this is your uh, this is your mono hybrid cross parents selfing of f1 f1 generation in f2 generation what do we get phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 very simple very easy now let's understand what is back cross now let's understand what is back cross Yes, anyone who can tell me? Ch I think chat is small lagging there. Can anyone tell me what is this back cross? Anyone knows? Students, back cross is actually two types. Back cross is actually a two lag. That's what I was checking. There was a small lag. I don't know why. Small lag, right? I think the lag is gone now. Students, back cross is of two types. That is fine now, right? Back cross of two types. The first type is what? In first type, we are taking F one, and we are crossing with dominant parent. Dominant parent. When we cross F one with a dominant parent, this is called as what? Out cross, also called as your open cross. Then we have F one crossing with recessive parent, recessive parents. This is called as your test cross. That is called as your test cross. Is there any lag still? Why is Gopi Kumar calling me? Students, so is the lag is the lag clear? Is the lag still there? Why is she calling me? Is the lag gone or still lag still there? Tell me in the chat. Because the chat itself is lagging here. Okay, the chat itself is lagging. Oh, now right, fine. What is the problem? Now, students, in your NCERT, in your syllabus, in your syllabus. Do you have outcross in your syllabus? No. Do you have to study outcross and separate type of other crosses? No. 
So in your NCRT, you mainly have three types of crosses. Monohybrid, dihybrid and test cross. Along with that, we have incomplete dominance, co-dominance and then we have pleiotropy and we have other things. Okay, but right now, outcross is not in your syllabus. Don't have to study. Don't study what is not for your syllabus. Study only what is important. So what is important for your syllabus is your test cross. Now what is this test cross? Test cross is a cross. Test cross is a cross. It is a cross between. It is a cross between dominant phenotype dominant phenotype and recessive parents and recessive parents so what is test cross students test cross is a type of cross in which we it is a between dominant phenotype but 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 why are we doing the test cross now tell me in the examination all of you write test in your class when, what do you get when you write the test when you write a test, you know how much of knowledge you have. You write mock test, you will know how much of numbers, how much of marks you are obtaining. So here also, so here also we are doing. Why is there a small lag there students? There is no way I can cure the lag. There is no way I can cure the lag. So, okay, I'll talk very slowly, okay, hopefully the lag goes, okay. So, what do you obtain from the test cross? Test cross is basically done to find the genotype of F1. It is basically done to, to find the genotype of the F1. For example, we have a tall plant here and crossing with a dwarf plant. What do we obtain? The F1, what do we get? Capital T, capital T or capital T small t. Imagine if you don't know this, this is dwarf. Imagine we don't know if it is dwarf. In F1, in F1, we have a tall plant. In F1, we have a tall plant. It can either be capital T capital T or it can be capital T small t. Yes. We can tell it is a tall plant just by looking at it. Yes. We can tell it is a tall plant just by looking at it. Okay, fine. It is a very tall plant. But can you tell the genotype of it? Tell me, can you tell me the genotype of a particular, particular plant just by looking at it? No, you cannot tell the genotype. To, in order to find the genotype, in order to find the genotype, we do, yeah, we do test cross. So why do we do test cross? Test cross is done. Test cross is conducted to find, to find genotype of F1. Why is test cross done? Test cross is conducted to find the genotype of the F1. Sir, can you give me an example? I will not give you an example. NCRT will give you an example. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Uh, this is visible to all of you? Yes, visible to all of you. Now, what did I tell you about test cross? Test cross is a cross. Test cross is a cross in which Yes, phenotype is caused by genotype. But can you tell? See, imagine here, imagine here, we have a tall plant. That is a phenotype. But can you tell, is genotype is capital T, capital T or capital T, small t? Will you, ever, will you be able to tell if it is capital T, capital T or capital T, small t just by looking at the plant? No, you cannot tell. Yes, for that very reason, we have test cross. For that very reason, we have something called as test cross. Listen to me very carefully. The example is very beautiful here. That is, I told you, what is test cross now? Test cross is a cross between dominant phenotype. Wrote here, right? It is between dominant phenotype and recessive parents. Here. What is the dominant phenotype? Dominant phenotype is here. Dominant phenotype is violet color. Yes. Phenotype, not genotype, not dominant genotype. Dominant phenotype is violet color. But do we know the genotype? No, we do not know the genotype. The genotype here can be, the genotype here can be capital W, capital W or it can be K, 
capital W, small w. It can be both of them. That is, the genotype can be homozygous dominant or it can be heterozygous dominant. Any of the two possibilities can happen. So, how do you find now? So, we take this particular dominant phenotype and we cross it with homozygous recessive parents. We take the dominant phenotype and cross it with homozygous recessive parents. What do we get? Based on the, based on the phenotype which we obtain in the progeny, that's how we obtain the genotype. Then because of that we find the genotype. Didn't understand? Don't worry, I'll tell you. So when we do this cross, what do we get? Here we have small w, small w, capital W and capital W. When we cross, what do we get? Capital W, small w, capital W, small w, capital W, small w, and capital W, small w. What is the result here? All flowers are violet. All flowers are violet. That is your phenotype which you are obtaining from the test cross. Here, what do we get here? Capital W, small w, capital W, small w. So, two are violet. And this is small w, small w, small w and small w. So, here, what do we get? Half of the flowers are violet and half are white. Now, based on the phenotype in the offspring, based on the phenotype in the offspring, we are determining the genotype in the F1. Imagine if the reason we the reason the reason we are getting all violet is because only way the only way we'll get all violet here is only if we have capital W capital W. But what if it was capital W small W? In that case, in the phenotype of your F2, we'll obtain two will be white, two will be of the offsprings. We are determining, we are determining the, what? The genotype of the F1. If, if your, if your genotype of the F1 was capital W, small w, we would obtain 50% violet, 50% white. 50% violet, 50% white. If the genotype of the F1 would be, if, if it would be capital W, small w. If, if. If the genotype, if the, if the genotype of your unknown, if the genotype of your F1 would be capital W, capital W, we would obtain all the flowers would be violet. All the flowers would be violet in color. That is, unknown genotype is homozygous dominant. Here, the unknown genotype is heterozygous. Lag is still there. Oh my God. Here I can see clearly, no? Here I can see clearly. I'm not getting the lag here. Did you understand the concept here? We are, are you understanding the concept here? Based on the phenotype of the progenies, we are, we are finding the genotype of the F1. Genotype of the F1. That is your test cross. Okay? We are taking a chance. If, if it is capital W, capital W, we will obtain this. If it is capital W, small w, that is heterozygous dominant, we will obtain 50% will be violet and 50% will be white. Listen to me very carefully. Based on the, see, imagine if it was capital W, if we don't know this, what is this? We don't know what is this, okay? We don't know the genotype of this one. We don't know the oh I can hear us like this, huh? Okay. We don't know the genotype of this one. Yes. So we are assuming we are assuming to be capital W capital W, and then, then we are doing a cross. We are assuming it is capital W small W, and we are doing this cross. But when we obtain the progenies, when we obtain the progenies, then only we can tell this was homozygous dominant. This was heterozygous dominant. Based on the offsprings, 
based on the offsprings we are determining the proj genotype of your f1 okay now what do we obtain what do we obtain from your homo what do we obtain from your mono hybrid cross so from the mono hybrid cross we obtain two loss not three loss two loss what are two loss so so for homo sexual recessive genotype is known now see now here now if this was if this if this genotype if it was capital w small w this would have been the this would have been the result if this was if the genotype would have been capital w small w then this would have been the result basically they are telling you basically they are telling you whatever be the unknown genotype we can find the unknown genotype by assuming and we are crossing based on the phenotype of your offspring based on the phenotype of the offspring we are getting the genotype of the unknown okay that one line you should remember based on the phenotype of your f2 we are getting the genotype of f1 here whatever result you get here right use the logic if this was small w some small w you would get this this since it's capital capital we are getting this use logic okay the next one is your law of dominance now students in law of dominance there are three main important lines question will come only for three on these three different lines question cannot come from anywhere else law of dominance from your ncert three lines understand okay three lines understand that is the first line is here what the first line here is characters are controlled by discrete units called as factors or alleles in some books they'll write factors as genes but actually factors are alleles okay so all the characters are controlled by what characters are controlled by alleles for example the two alleles which are capital t capital t control for tallness small t small t controls for dwarfness factors occur in pair that is alleles are present in pair here in a dissimilar in a dissimilar pair of factors one member dissimilar pair means what capital t small t in dissimilar pair of factors one member of the pair is dominant here and the other is recessive small t is recessive here small t is recessive here but that is the law of dominance that is capital t is dominant small t is recessive the law of dominance is used to explain the expression of only one of the parental character in the mono hybrid cross in the f1 or if you notice right in the f1 generation in the f1 generation did we find both the parent characteristics no in the case of f1 we only found the tall characteristics that is the dominant character was only found in the f1 the recessive was not found in the f1 and the expression of both in the f2 in the f2 condition both were expressed dominant and recessive both were expressed it also explains the portion of 3 is to 1 obtained at the f2 why 3 is to 1 because homozygous dominant will or heterozygous dominant will produce tallness that is your 3 and one is your homozygous recessive one lesser one one is your homozygous recessive in nature that is clear is this lines clear to all of you students understand the lines of ncert see they can ask you see you might have studied these three points you might have studied these three points in ncert but they can give you an ar question from here from this line they can give you an ar question they can give you an ar question from here so understand the lines of ncert that is very important one is to two was to one is your genotypic ratio okay understand the lines of ncert so what they can ask give you an ar question mono the law of dominance explains portion of 3 is to 1 obtained in the f2 assertion reason would be they'll give you the reason because law of dominant homozygous dominant uh, the capital t is more dominant and small t is recessive assertion reason question clear so from every line of ncert they can give you a 
AR question like this. The next one is your law of segregation or also called as law of purity of gametes. Law of purity of gametes. Now, what does this say? What is the meaning of law of purity or law of segregation? That is, meaning is very simple. The meaning is very, very simple. That is, alleles do not blend. Alleles do not blend. Alleles do not blend. Alleles do not blend. That is, they separate. They separate into gametes. They separate into gametes. Simple example here is, come back to monohybrid cross. Let's go back to monohybrid cross. Here if you see, in your F1 generation, here if you notice, in your F1 generation, the, the small t allele, the cap, small t allele, is the allele lost? Is the allele lost here? Does the, did the allele lose its individuality here? No. The allele was not lost here. The allele did not get blended into here. The small t allele did not blend into capital T. It did not blend here. That is, alleles did not blend. Even if it is not expressing, even if the small t is not expressing in F1, it did not blend with, it did not, it did not blend. It did not completely blend with the capital T. It was present as such. How can you say so? How was it present as such? Because the small t expression came back again in the F2 generation. If you look this in your F2, the expression of your small t came back later on. That is, alleles do not blend. Alleles do not blend. They remain as separate. They remain as separate, separate. Okay? They remain separate, separate here. Now here, I want everyone to understand this small point here is, now imagine we have a, imagine if we have in the F1, in the F1 we have capital T small t, yes, this will give two types of gametes, that is capital T and small t, yes, it will produce two types of gametes, that is capital T and small t, yes, produce, now each gamete here, each gamete has one allele here. Can I add a statement? Here, each gamete, each gamete here has one allele here. So, can I make a statement saying that? Can I make a statement saying that here? A small statement saying that each gamete, each gamete is pure. Each gamete is pure for a trait. Each gamete is pure for a trait. What is the meaning of pure for a trait? This gamete is pure for tallness. This gamete is pure for dwarfness. So that is called as your purity of gametes. The meaning of purity of gametes is that gametes will have only one allele gametes will have only one allele and they are very pure they are very pure for that character or that trait they are very pure for that trait clear so in dihybrid cross how will we find the f1 generation i will tell you dihybrid cross is on its way and i'll tell you okay sir trick to remember the find gametes here here there is no trick here very easy right i will tell you a small trick in your dihybrid cross how to find gametes for dihybrid cross? I will tell you a small trick, but right now there is no trick for this. Okay. So, what is the meaning of law of segregation? The meaning of law of segregation is that alleles do not blend, they do not blend together. The alleles segregate out. The alleles segregate out during gamete formation. The alleles are segregating out during the gamete formation. One is your tall, one is for your dwarf. That is, each gamete has one allele and each gamete is pure for that trait. So, each gamete here is pure for a particular trait. Capital T is pure for tallness, small t is pure for dwarfness. Points are clear? Are you understanding the concept here? I do not want you to mug up any of this. 
no mugging up understand the concept why is it called as purity of gametes okay any doubt here students if there is no doubt here like the video right now like the video right now and we'll go to the next concept any doubt here students vishwa ravindrani crazy arun any doubt here ask me right now saul clear yes amazing all of you are amazing now when i spoke about your when i spoke about your uh, law of dominance i spoke in law of dominance that one is a dominant allele it will express all the time but are there ex exceptions are there exceptions to your law of dominance yes there are exceptions to your law of dominance the first exception the first exception for law of dominance is called as incomplete dominance what is it called it is called as your incomplete dominance here what happens in incomplete dominance in incomplete dominance one allele is incomplete dominant here one allele is incompletely dominant over the other allele over the other allele okay so imagine we had two alleles one allele was supposed to be dominant one allele was supposed to be recessive but here the dominant allele is not very functional it's like ha huh? like it's fine you also do some work i'll also do some work that is one allele is incompletely dominant over the allele now now quick tell me in the chat what happens in the f1 does the f1 will look like the parents or will it not look like the parents tell me in the chat tell me in the chat right now what happens to the f1 here what happens to the f1 here tell me here in this case the f1 generation the f1 generation will not look like any of the parents will will not look like look like both the parents it will not look like mm -hmm. it will not look like any of his parents no it is like rebel i am like i do not want to be like you like you i do not want to be also like like you i will be different i do not want to be a doctor do not want to be engineer i want to be a dancer you get that feeling right that is the incomplete dominance now incomplete dominance is seen where can anyone tell me where do you find incomplete dominance so students incomplete dominance is mainly found in your dog flower it is mainly found in the dog flower also called as your snap dragon snap dragon also called as what snap dragon or anthurium anthurium species also found in your four o'clock plant mirabilis jalapa also same exact also we find incomplete dominance now here one question arises sir what about the phenotypic and genotypic ratio is it just like your mono hybrid or is it different from mono hybrid question will come students in this case in this case let's draw the let's first draw the particular cross and then i'll tell you what type of question will come here example parents here first we'll do parents here first we'll do parents here now what are the parents here one parent will be red flower one parent will be red flower the other parent will be white flower will be white flower yes now what are the gametes here example this is your capital r capital r this is small r small r now what are the gametes here what are the gametes that is capital r small r fusion happens the f1 that is capital r and small r now this capital r and small r technically according to law of dominance this was supposed to be red but is it red now no this is a pink color flower that is it is not white it is not white or red it is not white or red the f1 here is 
pink color flower now what do we do we do selfing of f1 now we do selfing of f1 that is capital r small r capital r small r what do we obtain what do we obtain here that is capital r capital r capital r small r capital r small r and small r small r does it look like a mono hybrid cross still here yes it almost looks a mono hybrid cross but what is your phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio here what is your phenotypic and genotypic ratio the phenotypic ratio here is one homozygous one will be completely red these two will be pink in color and this one will be white in color so what is the ratio here that is red is to pink is to white that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is your phenotypic ratio now what about genotypic ratio genotypic ratio is again same 1 is to 2 is to 1 so can i tell can i tell in this condition phenotypic ratio is equal to genotypic ratio yes students can i tell that line this is a this can come as a question this can come as a question that is in which case in which case in which case pr is equal to gr phenotypic ratio is equal to genotypic ratio in which cases the answer should be incomplete dominance or also in the case of te uh, test cross that is 1 is to 1 okay so pr is equal to gr here okay also in the case of test cross now how many of you know the concept of dominance till here all of you would have understood till here all of you would have understood the concepts which i am teaching right now very easy concepts but if you open your ncert right now below below the incomplete dominance there is a small page small paragraph called as concept of dominance now tell me in the chat quickly honestly how many of you have actually understood concept of dominance tell me how many of you have actually watched that read that particular paragraph and try to understand the paragraph tell me honestly how many of you have done that honestly tell me how many of you have actually done that tell me in the chat i'm waiting how many of you have read this concept of dominance okay this is how dominance is formed so students concept of dominance is a dominance it tells you what why there is something called as dominance why do we have recessive like just why like you know why is there dominance and why is there recessive yes why do we have it that is your that is your concept of dominance very simple to understand let's understand with the help of a simple diagram okay yes that is the concept of for example we have a gene here this is your dna this dna has some one gene here now this gene will produce a certain type of protein this protein will show expression this protein will show expression that is a normal condition now this gene can have two forms capital t and small t yes it can have two different forms capital t and small t this is your heterozygous condition heterozygous condition now can i tell this small t is different small t is different from your capital t yes sir this is different from your capital t now can anyone tell me this small t could have undergone some type of changes imagine this small t why is it a small t the reason it is a small t is because it can undergo a certain type of changes when i say certain type of changes these changes are nothing but these changes are nothing but mutations or mutations changes are nothing but your mutations correct now sir listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully the same gene is responsible for two alleles now this two alleles 
these two alleles are responsible for two different enzymes. Yes, they are responsible for two different enzymes. Now, one enzyme will produce, one allele is responsible for a normal enzyme. One allele is responsible for a normal enzyme. That is your capital T. Capital T is responsible for a normal enzyme. Now, what about the small t? Now, this small t can actually be responsible for three different things. It can be responsible for three different things. That is, it can be responsible for a normal enzyme, normal. I'm, here, I am giving you an example of small t. But here, I am telling you an example of small t. But do not take as small t. Take it as the other allele. Take it as the other allele. Okay. The other allele can be responsible for a normal enzyme or low efficiency and low efficiency enzyme low efficiency enzyme yes it can be a function it can be the second allele can be responsible for non functional enzyme non functional enzyme non functional enzyme or it can be responsible for no enzyme at all no enzyme at all. No enzyme at all. So, students here, the normal enzyme here, the one which is producing your normal enzyme is called as what? The one which is producing your normal enzyme is called as your dominant. And the normal enzyme here, the other allele can also be dominant, right? We can have homozygous dominant. In that case, this is also dominant. Now, what if the second allele has undergone certain mutation? The second allele has undergone certain type of changes. That is called as in these two conditions, that is called as your recessive allele. So, students, how do we obtain recessive alleles in nature? Recessive alleles are obtained in nature because of certain mutations or certain changes. That's all. That is because of your non-functional enzyme or because of no enzyme at all. When they are not producing any enzyme or they are producing non-functional enzyme, they become recessive in nature. They become recessive in nature. Concept clear? Is the concept clear to all of you? This is called as your concept of dominance. Why do we have dominance? What do you have recessive? Recessive is because of what? Recessive is because of your certain type of changes or mutations. That is why we have the recessive allele. Amazing. The next concept here is codominance. One by one, students, one by one. Learn it easily. Listen to me very carefully. In nature, in nature, we have two type of alleles. The one allele which is responsible for the one allele which is responsible for normal enzyme. Normal enzyme is called as your dominant allele. The second enzyme which has undergone certain type of changes. Now, because of these changes, it is producing non-functional protein or non-functional enzyme or no enzyme at all. That type of allele which has undergone changes, which is not producing any enzyme, is called as your recessive allele. That is called as your recessive allele. Clear? Next is codominance. Very easy. Codominance is very easy. Codominance is very, very easy. Okay, here, tell me in the chat, in incomplete dominance, one allele was incompletely dominant over other allele. Yes, in one allele, in incomplete, one allele was incompletely dominant over other allele. But in the co-dominance, what happens? In case of your co-dominance, in the case of co-dominance, both allele both alleles are dominant both alleles are dominant here both alleles are dominant here since both alleles are dominant here what happens to the f1 generation does the f1 generation look like parents or one of the parent or both the parents in the case of your codominance the f1 generation that is F1 generation 
resemble resemble both the parents it resembles both the parents here that is called as your codominance both the parents now what is the concept behind this now what is the concept behind this the concept behind the codominance is very simple the concept behind the codominance is something called as your multiple allelism what is it called the concept behind co codominance is something called as your multiple allelism now what is the meaning of this multiple allelism so let's listen to me very carefully multiple allelism is very simple if one gene if one gene has more than more than two alleles if one gene has more than two alleles that is called as your multiple allelism and do we see multiple allelism in the case of your codominance yes example abo blood grouping the famous example is your the famous example for your multiple allelism is a b o blood grouping blood grouping a b o blood grouping clear that is the example of your multiple allelism now students let's understand about little more about your more, more, let's understand little bit more about your a b o blood grouping yes sir we can so students i told you here in the case of your a b o blood grouping we have three alleles yes in the case of your a b o blood grouping we have three different alleles now what are these three different alleles the three different alleles here are your i a i b and i zero or small i now out of these three different alleles the two are dominant and the one is recessive one this small one is your recessive in nature now students tell me in the chat very quickly humans are diploid or haploid humans are diploid organisms all of you know humans are diploid organisms yes is it possible to us to have all the three alleles inside our body tell me is it possible to have all the three alleles inside our body no that is the answer is no here that is in humans in humans two alleles out of three will be present out of the two alleles out of the three alleles only two will be present inside our body now for that that is basically your abo blood grouping students do you want to know the actual structure of do you want to know what happens in the rbc and everything tell me chat do you want to know rbc it has h antigen it has a type of glucose so students basically what happens here is this is your basically your the two ia and ib we produce different types of sugar and your i will produce no sugar at all doesn't produce sugar at all okay you want to learn okay okay i'll tell you 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 if you want to know i'll tell you i don't have any objection if you want to learn okay i'll tell you okay now see we cannot have three alleles in our body we are diploid organisms right now what is the next uh, thing i have to tell you yeah ab of blood grouping now students let's understand ab of blood grouping very simple very simple that is your this is your rbc rbc now this rbc has an h antigen on top of it h antigen on top of this yes now to this h antigen one sugar will add here one sugar will be added here one sugar will be add here if the sugar if the sugar is galactose if the sugar is galactose that is galactose it will result in your it will result in ib it will result in 
IB or B type blood grouping. I it will result in IB. What if this sugar is this sugar is your uh, this sugar can be your N-acetyl glucosamine. If this particular sugar is no galactosamine, N-acetyl, N-acetyl, galactosamine. If this sugar is N-acetyl galactosamine, if this particular sugar which is present on top is N-acetyl glylactosamine, this will result in IA. What if this one blood group and in this antigen there is no sugar, no sugar that will be your I zero that will be your I zero. So depending upon which type of sugar is present on your H plus antigen, it will result in a IA, IB or I not. IA, IB or I not. For example, here whenever allele from the parent one is going to be your IA and allele from your parent two is going to be IA, the genotype is going to be both IA, IA. That is going to be blood group is going to be A. Blood group is going to be A in those in that case. Now, what if there is IA from parent one and IB from parent two? Both are dominant here. So both will be present in the both type of sugar will be present. That is both this sugar and that sugar will be present on the H plus antigen and which, which will result in your IA and IB AB type of blood group. Then we have IA and from parent 2 we do not have from parent 2 we do not have any type of sugar that will result in your A blood group. Similarly, similarly from this uh, ulta if you do IB here and IA here we get AB here again. Now if, you, if parent 1 has IB and if this one doesn't this also has IB, B blood grouping because I0 or I0 is recessive in nature. So every single time IA or IB is present that will be more dominant that will be more dominant here you can see here i i a i b from one parent one i from parent two that's going to be i b i or it will be bleach blood grouping let's take one example in the chat tell me your blood grouping quickly tell me in the chat what is your blood group quickly tell me in the chat what is your blood group anyone who can tell me anyone what is your blood group let's take one example also what is your blood group what is your blood group? Okay. Rakesh is saying B positive. Oh, Rakesh is O negative. I am O positive. Okay, let's take B. If Rakesh is B, if Rakesh blood group is B. Yes. Now, what are the possibilities he has? What are the passive possibilities of the parents here? The parent one can be parent one and parent two. The parent one can be I B. Parent two can be I B and blood group is going to be B blood group. Or the other possibility is your parent one is your I not. This is I B. In that case also blood group is going to be B. The other possibility is this going to be I B is going to be I not that is going to be again B blood grouping again it's going to be B blood grouping are you understanding everyone are you understanding everyone this is how you can find the blood grouping this is how you can find the blood grouping clear <clears throat> that is done now can we start with the inheritance of 2 gene now can we start can we start now inheritance of 2 gene that is your dihybrid cross here i will tell you a small trick to remember the gametes which you can use in your examination can we start if there is no doubt till now hit the like button right now and tell no doubt sir no doubt one second my phone charging is dying That is RH factor. That is RH factor.
um, one of the students will be drinking some water. <coughs> <clears throat> RH factor, iron. Okay, so can we start inheritance of two genes now? Can we start? This is going to be your dihybrid cross. RH factor is going to be your, sorry, your two gene is going to be your inheritance of two genes is going to be your dihybrid cross. Okay, now can we start? Very simple. Again, we can do the same type of cross we'll be doing. It's going to be very very easy. Here. What are the parents here? What are the parents here? Now, in mono hybrid cross, in the case of your mono hybrid cross, we used a single character. Yes, in the case of your mono hybrid cross, we use a single character. But, but in the case of your di hybrid cross, we need to include two different characters. Not we, Mendel included two different characters. For example, example, the parent one was round and yellow round and yellow what about parent two parent two was smaller smaller small by small by that is nothing but your wrinkled and green wrinkled and green here yes wrinkled and green now let's form the gametes here what is the gametes here what are the gametes here Capital R and capital Y, yes, here small r and small y. Then we do a crossing. When we do a crossing, what do we get? Capital R, small r, capital Y, and small y. Now, what is the phenotypic property here? This particular F1 plant is going to be what? Round and yellow. Round and yellow. Because round is dominant yellow is dominant that is expressed here that is expressed here then now what do we do now the next is selfing of f1 next is selfing of f1 selfing of f1 what that is going to be crossing with now here when we do the selfing of f1 we need to make a Punnett square again. We need to make, sir, how do we cross, how do we cross the F1 here? Huh. Selfing of F1, I'm doing no, selfing of F1. Now, there's a small trick to find the gametes here. Small trick to find gametes. Listen to me very carefully. I'll write in the middle here, then I'll erase later on. I'll write in the middle, middle, middle here, then I will erase stick pink here. So, what do we have here? Capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Now, what is the trick here? Trick here is very simple. First, this to this, this to this. Yes, that to that and that to that. That is, that is, what do we get? The first one is capital R and capital Y. Capital R and small y. Yes, capital R and small y. The second one is what? In second one, we take this to this and this to this. Small r and capital Y and small r and small y. Small r and small y. Very simple. First, here to here and here to here. From here to here and here to here. Then this to here and this to here. Capital R and capital Y capital R and small y, small r and capital Y, small r and small y. Clear? 
It is not a trick. This is how we should find gametes. Then what do we do? Now we make a Punnett square. That I will not going to be doing. That I will not be going to be doing because it, it is waste. You should be know how to do the Punnett square. You should know how to do the Punnett square. If you do not know, I will make a separate video on this if you want to, want to know. All you need to do is, see, take your gametes here. Capital R, capital Y, capital R, small y. Yes, capital R, small y, small r, capital Y, and small r, small y. Write the same thing here. Write the same thing here. I won't be doing this, but I'll just be telling you how to do it. Now you do a cross. Capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. Just like this, you should keep on doing the entire thing. Just like this, you should be doing the entire thing. See here is this, no? Yes. Just like that, you should do the entire thing. When you do the entire cross here, when you do the entire cross here, what do you obtain? When you do the entire cross like this, we obtain a particular Punnett square like this. We have to put a particular Punnett square like this. Now here, what is important here? The important thing which you need to know here is the phenotypic ratio and genotypic ratio. What you need to know here is the phenotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio. Now what is the phenotypic ratio here? The phenotypic ratio here is going to be your 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 that is going to be your round yellow round green parent then replace yellow with green then wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green this is going to be 9, 3, 3 and finally 1. This is going to be your phenotypic ratio. Now the, this is, these two are going to be what? Parental. These two are recombinant. Are recombinant. These two are recombinant. Then first and last one are parental. Now in the question, they can ask you a question from here. What is the percentage of parental in your dihybrid cross? What is the percentage of recombinant in dihybrid cross? Add the thing, divide by the total. What is the total here? Total is going to be a 16. Yes? 16. Divide by 16 into 100. Percentage of recombinant. Percentage of recombinant is going to be what? 3 plus 3 divided by 16 into 100. Done. Yes, that's how the questions are going to be asked. If you know the concept, if you know the concept, you will know the entire thing. Now, the next thing is going to be your genotypic ratio. How do you find genotypic ratio, students? Does anyone know how to find genotypic ratio? Have you ever found? If you do not, if you do not know, today I will be teaching you two methods to find the genotypic ratio. Two methods to find the genotypic ratio. The first method is called as your fork line method. The first one is called as what? The first one is called as your... Now, what is the meaning of fork line method? Now, what is this? Well, what is this fork line method? Fork line method is very simple. Fork line method is very, very simple. That is, A here we had capital R, capital R, small r, small r, capital Y, capital Y, and small y, small y. We are taking, we are taking the same, same characters here, but in the form of, but in the form of monohybrid cross. What is the meaning of that students? Listen to me very carefully. Imagine this is just like, this is just like your capital T, capital T crossing with small t, small t. Yes, this is your round, wrinkled yellow sorry, yellow and green the simple sim it is similar to your capital t small t yes now what was the what was the genotypic ratio in your monohybrid cross of this one monohybrid cross was 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is one one of here the genotypic ratio was what capital t capital t is to capital t small t small t small t similarly can i also write for this genotypic ratio is going to be Capital T, capital T, sorry, capital R, capital R, capital R smaller and smaller, smaller. Can I write like that? Can I write? Yes, I can write. Similarly, I can write here 
capital Y, capital Y, capital Y, small y, and small y, small y. Can I write? Yes, I can write. Now, what is the genotypic ratio? Imagine if this was your homo, if this was your monohybrid cross, the genotypic ratio is going to be what? The genotypic ratio is going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1, 1 is to 2 is to 1. Yes, 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now, what do you need to do here? Now, oh my god, I think I stepped on mic. Check, 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 sound is coming. Yes, check, sound is coming. Now, what you need to do here is, I will do for one, rest you should do. What you need to do here is, take both, you need to take both the mono hybrid cross and multiply. How do you do this? For example, you need to multiply capital R, capital R, multiplied with capital Y, capital Y, capital Y, small y, and multiply with small y, small y. Multiply in the similar fashion. The second one you should take again, capital R, small r, take it, multiplied with capital Y, capital Y, capital Y, small y, and small y, small y. Similarly, multiply your, I'll do it out, don't worry, small r, small r with capital Y, capital Y, capital Y, small y, and your small y, small y. When I say multiply, what are you multiplying? You are actually multiplying the genotypic ratio. Now here, genotypic ratio of your capital Y, capital Y was what? 1. Of your cap, by capital Y, capital Y was 1. For this it was 2. For this it was 1. Capital Y, capital R, genotypic ratio was what? 2. Here this was what, what again? Same. 1, 2, 1. What was smaller, smaller? Smaller, smaller was 1. Here again this is 1, 2 and 1. Now try multiplying students. Try multiplying this. What do you obtain? When you multiply this, what do you obtain students? When you, what do you obtain? 1 into 1 is 1. 1 into 2 is 2. 1 into 1 is 1. Is 2. 2 into 1 is 2. 2 into 2 is 4. 2 into 2 is, this is going to be, 2 into 1 is 2 again, is 2. 1 into 1 is 1. 1 into 2 is 2. And 1 into 1 is 1. This is going to be your, this is called as fork line method. That is, you are considering, you are considering two different characters as monohybrid cross. You are considering them as monohybrid cross. Now, this is called as fork line method to find your genotypic ratio. Understood? Did everyone understand? And if you think, sir, this is such a complicated method, tell us a much more easier method. I will tell you. I will tell you here. What is the easier method here? What is the easier method, students? Easier method is very simple. Easier method is even more simple. That is, all you need to do here. The easier method is here. Easier method is on this side. What you need to do is multiply, multiply this to. Try, now try multiply this to now. Multiply this to three three za nine three one za three one three za three one one za one. Got it. Two mono hybrid cross is basically one dihybrid cross. Understood? Sir, what about dihybrid cross? Do we also have a similar trick for dihybrid cross? Is it applicable for dihybrid cross? Yes. How do you do it? Multiply 1 is to 2 is to 1 into 1 is to 2 is to 1. Multiply this now. What do you get? 1 into 1 is 1. 1 into 2 is 2. And 1 into 1 is 1. Here. Then again multiply 2 into 1 is 2. 2 into 2 is 4, 2 into 1 is 2 again, last multiply again, 1 into 1 is again 1, 1 into 2 is 2 and 1 into 1 is 1 again. Understood? This is much more easier method and in the examination, if you don't remember that you have so many options, like you get confused in the genotypic ratio someday, if you get confused in the genotypic uh, someday, understand this trick that is multiplying two monohybrid cross, multiplying two monohybrid cross, you will obtain, you will obtain 
डाइहाइब्रिड क्रॉस ओके यू विल ऑप्टेन डाइहाइब्रिड क्रॉस क्लियर ना दिस इज दिस इज नॉट ट्रिक दिस इज हाउ यू एक्चुअली ऑप्टेन दिस इज हाउ यू एक्चुअली ऑप्टेन दिस इज द ट्रिक दिस इज द ट्रिक हियर क्लियर हो गोपी का नाम इज हियर येस आई एम यूजिंग ऑल ऑफ कलर कलरफुल नाउ ओके दिस इज अ ट्रिक मल्टीप्लाई द टू मोनोहाइब्रिड्स यू ऑप्टेन द क्लियर 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 इज दिस ट्रिक इज दिस ट्रिक अंडरस्टूड एवरी वन दिस इज द एक्चुअल ट्रिक दिस इज द एक्चुअल ट्रिक टू अंडरस्टैंड द फिनोटिपिक रेशियो और जीनोटिपिक रेशियो ऑल यू नीट टू डू इज मल्टीप्लाई द टू मोनोहाइब्रिड यू विल ऑप्टेन द जीनोटिपिक और रेशियो फिनोटिपिक रेशियो ओके दिस इज द ट्रिक हियर If you get confused in the notes later on, this is the trick. Mm -hmm. Now, can they ask you numericals here? Yes. Now, what type of numericals you can expect here is students write down this formula. Write down this formula right here. A formula which you, which you can use later on to find the uh, uh, numericals. Okay. For example, first formula is if they ask you number of gametes. If a question will ask you find the number of gametes, you need to do is two to the power of n. All you need to do is two to the power of n. That is the formula. Here n is nothing but the heterozygotes. How many heterozygotes are there? That is the formula. The second formula is for number of offspring's. In the examination, in your question, if they ask you, if they will give you a particular, they will give you gametes. They'll give you parent one has these many gametes, parent two has these many gametes. What is the offspring? Yes, that time you should know number of offspring from parent one into into number of offspring from parent two will give you the number of offsprings. Clear? Now students in the examination they can give you gametes. They can give you they can give you heterozygote. In the examination they can directly give you the heterozygotes. and they can ask you the number of offsprings in the examination they can give you like this capital a capital a capital a capital uh, capital b small b capital c small c yes they can give you like this they can give you a they can give you a particular ratio like this and they will tell you how many offsprings are made here how many offsprings now first you need to find number of gametes how do you find there are two different there are two here there are two heterozygotes here yes so 2 to the power of n 2 to the power of 2 that is going to be 4 that is going to be your four gametes from one parent now imagine they'll give you one more parent like this they'll give you one more parent like this they'll give you one more parent like this this is your parent one parent 1 this is your parent 2 in parent 1 we are obtaining how many gametes four gametes why that is because of 2 to the power of 2 2 to the power of 2 here we only have one heterozygote one heterozygote means 2 to the power of 1 that is going to be a 2 again so two gametes here two gametes here that is add here 2 into 4 that is going to be your six offsprings that is going to be your six offsprings understanding understanding clear that's how the question can be formed that's yes 8 8 sorry four to eight so they can give you eight offsprings so that's how the question can be uh, that's how the question can be asked in examination they can give you heterozygotes like this you need to find the you need to find the heterozygotes once you find the heterozygotes you can find the gametes once you find the gametes you can use this formula to find the number of offspring okay don't worry all this information will be given to you we will be solving yes we will be solving every single numerical we'll be solving every single numerical from this chapter in a separate video so don't worry for now for now write down the particular formula and your set okay in your set here uh, now 
what do you understand now from your from your die habit cross what do you understand which law do you get students from your mono habit cross we obtain law of dominance as well as law of segregation yes but from your die habit cross from your die habit cross what do you obtain so students in the, listen to me very carefully from your die hybrid cross from your die hybrid cross the law which is obtained is law of independent assortment what do we obtain students law of independent assortment now what is law of independent assortment telling you law of independent assortment is telling you a topper will never copy what is the meaning sir that is a topper will stay as a topper separately whoever is making noise in the class whoever is copying in the class doesn't matter a topper will be separate a, a particular other copying person will be separate that is in the case of your dihybrid cross a character responsible for your round character responsible for your shape of the color shape of the seed and the character responsible for the color of the seed both of them are separate separate do they mix no that is when two pairs of contrasting traits two pairs of contrasting traits that is your round shape wrinkled shape yellow seed green seed yes two pairs of contrasting traits are combined in a hybrid segregation of one pair of character is independent of other pair of character one pair of character will be separating it out topper will become topper he cannot be disturbed no con ultimate concentration the other person who just want to make to waste time who doesn't want to write information who doesn't want to learn the information who just here to sit time pass just a spammer a spammer will remain a spammer a topper will remain a topper a spammer will remain a spammer a spammer can never become a topper they are separating subrogately understood understood clear clear is this point clear to all of you that is your law of segregation now students with that with that being said with that being said half or i can say half of your chapter is over 3/4 of your chapter is over with that the next concept is your linkage next concept is your linkage okay now before we go to the linkage or recombination which is even more very easy see if you think di hybrid and mono hybrid was easy linkage and recombination is equally easy i don't know why why everyone makes it so complicated i don't know why everyone if i ask a student if i ask a student sir what what is your uh, difficulty in this chapter everyone says sir i am not understanding linkage i am not understanding recombination i don't know why because linkage and recombination is very easy okay clear we'll understand linkage and recombination so before we understand linkage and recombination there are few other concepts which you need to understand the few the topics which you need to understand that is the few the topic you need to understand that is your rediscovery of mendel's work what is the meaning of rediscovery of mendel's work the meaning as the word says that is when mendel was alive when mendel was uh, mendel was alive no one literally no one cared about his work mendel was working for 7 years no one bothered for his work only after his death only after his death his work was resurfaced afterwards because of the three main scientists if there was no these three main scientists did not actually go back and check his work today we would not have mendelian genetics today we would not have mendelian genetics now what was his rediscovery of work listen to me very carefully mendel published his work in 1865 but it remained unrecognized till 1900s unrecognized no one even bothered probably reasons could be work could not be widely published that is he was very shy very shy his work was not published very widely factors were stated as stable and discrete units by mendel and mendel's concepts of alleles that is he alleles never blend was not accepted by his contemporaries that is he mendel told mendel told that there are something called as factors and his factors do not blend this concept was 
not accepted by other people that time okay the use of mathematics to explain biological phenomena was unacceptable like how of you also unaccept right right now if i give you a numerical you'll be like sir numerical huh? numerical huh? very difficult this is one problem one problem with uh, all the neat aspirants we all of us think numericals in biology numericals in biology difficult sir all of you think like that no that is what is happening back then also they are like sir no 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 don't want don't want numerical okay no physical proof for existence of factors that is the technology was not advanced the technology was not advanced to identify the factors so these were the different reasons for the you know mendel's work was not recognized but later on but later on there were three main amazing scientists that is your hugo de veris which we learnt in your evolution charles cons and enrich war tuskmark very difficult to say it's shumak not tasma t silent shumak 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 okay he was a dutch austrian and german german dutch and he was austrian botanist austrian botanist these are three different scientists that is in 1900s three scientists that is de veris cons and shumak independently rediscovered mendel's work on the inheritance of characters that is your mendel's rediscovery so do you think mendel was lucky yes when he was alive little bit of lucky mostly unlucky but later on after his death all his work came upon so students can we start now can we start chromosomal theory of inheritance can we start chromosomal theory terms of before i start chromosomal theory of inheritance quickly like the video first quickly like the video because i'm going to teach you chromosomal theory of inheritance which is very very easy which is very very easy can we start can we start chromosomal theory of inheritance is the the most easiest thing very easy very easy very easy well, the, the the reason i'm telling you very easy it is because after listening to my words you're like why was so much of importance given to this okay why was so much importance even given to this so students listen to me very carefully chromosomal theory of inheritance was actually given by two main scientist that is your certain and boveri yes certain boveri in the year 1902 in the year 1902 we got certain boveri gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance but sir what is this chromosomal theory of inheritance students listen to me very carefully chromosomal theory in the sense says that behavior of a chromosome yes behavior of a chromosome is similar to behavior of a gene that's all behavior of a chromosome is equal similar to behavior of a gene why because gene is present on a chromosome that is if a chromosome is separating gene is also separating that's all is your chromosomal theory of inheritance that is all is your chromosomal theory of inheritance okay let me write down few points that is here they found they found what similarities between similarities be transmission between transmission difference between similar between transmission of mendelian mendelian traits they found similarities between transmission of mendelian traits Mend uh, mendelian traits also called as your hereditary traits heredity traits heredity heredity traits and mendelian or mendelian or heredity traits as well as chromosome as well as behavior of chromosome from one generation to next that is the way chromosomes are behaving similarly genes are also 
behaving if chromosome is separating genes are also separating genes are also separating that is we observed that behavior of chromosome is parallel to the behavior of the genes or factors genes or factors did everyone understand this line did everyone understand this line everyone that is they observed that behavior of chromosome the way a chromosome is behaving is exactly like the behavior of a gene why because gene is actually present on a chromosome chromosome they used chromosome movement during the cell division to explain mendel's law of inheritance so they explained mendel's law of inheritance they discovered mendel's law of inheritance they were able to explain the mendel's law of experiment with the help of chromosome movement with the help of chromosome movement that's all that is all chromosomal theory of inheritance is that is all nothing much no more complication right no more complication chromosomal theory returns that is all is chromosomal theory of inheritance so basically later on sutton sutton combined he combined what knowledge of chromosomal inheritance knowledge of chromosomal chro mo chromosomal inheritance plus mendelian principle plus your mendelian principle together they were called as what that is knowledge of chromosomal inheritance plus mendelian inheritance together they were called as what together they were called as your chromosomal theory of inheritance chromosomal theory of inheritance that is knowledge of chromosomal inheritance plus mendelian principle make up your chromosomal theory of inheritance clear 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 everyone do not think it's a big deal do not think uh, your uh, this is just like your semi osmotic theory chemi osmotic theory sounds like so fancy no chemi osmotic theory something big will be happening there what is chemi osmotic theory chemi osmotic theory is basically telling you how atp is generated that's all this is also just like that chromosomal theory inheritance it sounds very big very simple that is they observe that behavior of chromosome is parallel to the behavior of genes both of them are acting just like that they are basically brother and sister okay basically brother and sister now students do they have any similarities do they have any similarities here what are the ayyo one second oh what is happening okay this is why i should not use this now are there any similarities here yes that is chromosomal linearity and mendelian conclusion both both of them that is your chromosomal theory of inheritance as well as mendelian in conclusions do they have any similarities among them i told him they are brother and sister brother and sister will have some form of similarities right they all the similarities it's very small is it <laughs> one second Mm. Now, is it visible? Is it visible, students? Is it visible now? What are similarities? First similarity is chromosome occur in pair. Mendelian conclusion also told that what genes occur in pair. Yes, genes are also occurring in pair. That is your alleles. Factors, factors occur in pair. Yes, chromosome segregate during gamete formation. factors segregate during gamete formation factors also occur in pair chromosome also occur in pair chromosome segregate independent of each other yes chromosomes separate out during your anaphase yes during your anaphase chromosomes are separating out similarly factors segregate independent of each other that is independent assortment that is basically independent assortment so students the conclusion here is what so what is the conclusion conclusion here is what mendelian conclusions as well as your chromosomal theory of inheritance 
basically has same meaning basically has same meaning what is alleles can anyone in the chat can anyone in the chat tell what is alleles to the puja students who are watching till now can anyone tell her see here students this is a diagram you are in ncrt right this is a diagram in ncrt does it look complicated very easy very easy listen to me very carefully <clears throat> g1 phase chromosome is looking like this then we have s phase in s phase chromosomal doubling happens in s phase in your s phase dna duplication happens the chromosome is looking like this can you see this is g2 phase after yes this is g2 phase after yes this is g2 phase yes in g2 phase can you see doubling of chromosomal material uh, doubling of dna has happened then we have your ana phase what happens in the ana phase can anyone tell me my dear students if you have attended my cell cycle and cell division what exactly happens in your meiosis 1 ana phase meiosis 1 ana phase what happens in the case of your meiosis 1 ana phase there is separation of homologous chromosomes what separation of what separation of homo logus chromosomes yes can you see homologous chromosomes are being separated out now here can you see meiosis 2 ana phase now what is happening in the case of your meiosis 2 ana phase separation of sister chromatid separation of sister chromatid can you see sister chromatid also being separated then we have finally in the end we have four different cells basically basically all they are telling you is cell division here which is happening in the chromosomes and this is similar this particular phenomena happens in the case of your genes also yes in the genes monohybrid cross you saw, saw right in monohybrid cross separation of gametes was happening fusion was happening same thing is happening yes so can anyone tell rakesh when this synapse happens if you have attended if you have if you have attended my lecture on your cell cycle and cell division can anyone tell uh, rakesh when does the synapse happens because we are we are telling one chapter here if you go to the other chapter it becomes difficult tell tell him fast quickly everyone we have learned it beautifully now here students listen to me very carefully here what is happening here students again this particular diagram this particular diagram here is basically telling you that one possibility is this second possibility is this in one possibility again meiosis 1 meiosis 2 germ cell formation here orange is paired with red yellow is paired with red separation is happening but is there a chance is there a chance of your crossing over happening rakesh was asking crossing over can happen here in meiosis yes sir crossing over can happen here so if students if crossing over is happening can this red be transported here okay see here this red is transported here and this is transported here crossing over can happen yes that is what is happening similarly if in the in in the case of your dihybrid cross we had what capital r small r capital y small y was this not similar to crossing over was this not similar to crossing over that is what they are trying to explain you that is what they are trying to explain you this is like crossing over right we are combining two different we are combining four characters here so four different traits here and two characters are being crossed here right characters have been crossed here similarly we can have what we can have round green also we can have round green that is your recombinant round green was recombinant similarly your wrinkled yellow wrinkled yellow was also recombinant now this recombinant were found in your dihybrid cross that is basically what this is basically your crossing over crossing over they are basically crossing over right so all they are telling you chromosome is following a pattern genes are also following a same pattern that is your chromosomal theory of inheritance does anyone have a doubt anyone has a doubt
Why are we learning chromosomal theory of inheritance? Very simple, right? Very, very simple. Now, now listen to me very carefully. Now I spoke about GAN. I from last 10 minutes, I'm telling you about chromosomal theory of inheritance from 10 minutes. But should you believe me? What am I telling you? Whatever I'm telling you, right? Will you believe? Yes, you will believe because I am your teacher right now. I'm telling you some information. But this, all the scientists, all the other scientists, will they believe? No. Oh, hands are very cold. <laughs> they need proof. The experimental proof was given by none other than your T.H. Morgan. So handsome he looks, right? With nice beard and all. Yes, nice beard and moustache. The handsome here is the T.H. Morgan. So T.H. Morgan was the scientist who gave the explanation as well as the scientific proof that yes, recombination is happening. This is happening. That is happening. He was a scientist who gave it all. Okay. He was a scientist who gave all the answers here. He worked on he worked on your Drosophila melanogaster, which is a type of fruit fly. You might have noticed, right? You might have noticed. You, you take one fruit and one banana peel and keep it on a uh, one desk. After some time, small, small, one round, cute, cute, and the round thing becomes on small, small, sits on the top of it, right? That is your fruit fly, also called as your Drosophila melanogaster. Okay. That was his work. Work was mainly on. That is experimental proof was given by your T. H. Morgan. Now, students, this, the reason I've given you, the reason I've given you this paragraph of NCID SNP is because every single line here is very important. Every single line here is very important because why? Oh, whoa, 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 what is happening? Now, listen to me very carefully. Why did he, what are the advantage? What are the advantages of Drosophila melanogaster? Can anyone tell me what are the advantages of Drosophila melanogaster? The, why he did not use pea plants only? Why did he shift from pea plants to animals? He could have taken a frog, he could have taken a lizard, he could have taken a bird. Why? Why did he find Drosophila? Answer to that question is in this paragraph here, NCID. Does it look ulta? Okay, okay, one second. One second, students. Oof, oof. Okay, done. Now, what is the answer here, students? Again, it's still, it's fine. What is the answer here? The first point here is what? They could be grown on a simple synthetic medium in a laboratory. He did not use even a laboratory also. Take a fruit fly, keep it on a particular, uh, keep it on a banana peel, flies will come. The reason they're telling you synthetic medium is because they specifically want a house fly or a fruit fly with a red eyes, white body. When you want specific characters, that time we need to grow in lab. Otherwise, roadside only, roadside also can get it. Okay. They complete their life cycle in about two weeks. So very less, very less lifespan. If the lifespan is very less, if the lifespan is very less, can we do more and more experiments? Yes. Also, single mating could produce a large number of offspring flies. That is your third point. There was a clear difference, differentiation of the sexes. That is, male was tiny, papa, small cute one, tiny. Female was very large here. Female was very large here. That is your fourth point here. Fourth point here. Okay, distribution. Also, it has many types. Also, many types of heredity variation that could be seen with a low power microscope. Low power microscope. Color of the eyes, wings, big wings, small wings, body color. It could be brown, it could be different. So, all those different characteristics, characteristics could be seen in the microscope, low power microscope. Now, those are the reasons you took. Drosophila. Yes, Tarun Reddy, I remember from your 9th and 10th class. I used to teach. Yes, I remember. Okay. Now, students, can we do linkage? Can we do linkage and recombination? Yes. Can we do something called as linkage and recombination? Yes. Now, students, here we have a student among the chat. We have a student from class 10th right now. His name is Tarun Reddy. Okay. 
we have a student from class 10th he just finished his class 10th now i will teach in a so simple manner that even a class 10th student can understand a class 12th concept challenge let's see challenge students very simple here we'll take a famous example here we'll take a very famous example that is your pandu imagine there is pandu here let me use mm, yellow color all of us know pandu yes all of us know pandu here all of us know pandu yes all of us know pandu here yes now this pandu has a girl next to him yes the girl next to him here is champa a girl next to here him is champa is here champa is next to him yes champa is next to him pandu is here champa is here okay now between them between them the bond the link they have the love they have is so strong that is pandu and champa the relationship between them the link between them the bond between them is super strong super strong so can i write can i write the linkage between them linkage between them is very high linkage them between is very high if the linkage between them is very high is there a chance that pandu will leave and go pandu will leave and go no pandu will cannot go leave, leave he cannot leave that is recombination leaving is nothing but your recombination is very recombination is very low that is pandu and champa are so close together that they will not leave each other that they will not leave each other that is recombination is very low between them what if what if champa has gone to her village or native imagine champa has gone new girl called as sampa is here okay now imagine even though even though when some champa is gone sampa is coming into the picture even though now what happens here now pandu is doing what champa is gone champa is gone somewhere so what does he do pandu makes friends with sampa pandu will become friends with what pandu will become friends with sampa that is their linkage the linkage between them they just met each other they ju they just met each other so linkage will be high or low linkage will be very low yes they just met each other linkage is very low now if the linkage is very low what is the what will be the recombination what happens to the recombination recombination is very high recombination is very high that is so linkage is linkage may be low ja pandu champa left champa left somewhere so pandu is also leaving that is recombinant becomes very high okay so students listen to me very carefully with the help of with the help of gene now with the help of gene let's understand example example is what here again simple example listen to me very carefully all of you listen to me very carefully if this is a chromosome if this is a chromosome right here listen to me very carefully very important concept understanding okay on this chromosome we have one gene here and one gene here gene a and gene b and we have a gene c here so on a chromosome on a chromosome we have three different genes here that is gene a and gene b gene a and gene b are very close to each other then G, gene a and gene c see here very carefully gene a and gene b are very close to each other that is linkage is very high so recombination will be very low recombination will be very low between gene a and gene b now what about your gene a and gene c the linkage between them is link is not there sampa and pandu sampa and pandu they are not connected the no linkage is there that is between gene a and gene c very less linkage but recombination is very high recombination is very high what does this tell you what does this tell you students tell me in the chat what does it tell you this tell you that linkage is 
inversely proportional to recombination inversely proportional to recombination linkage is inversely proportional to recombination but one question is still i didn't answer what is a linkage then sir what is a linkage students a linkage is nothing but a physical association a physical association between two genes on a chromosome is called as linkage repeat after me students what is linkage linkage is nothing but linkage is nothing but physical association between two genes on a chromosome two genes on a chromosome is called as your linkage what is recombination recombination is nothing but the relationship between sampa and pandu what is recombination recombination is nothing but non parental combination what is recombination non parental combination is your what recombination non parental combination is your recombination that is between recombination is your what is the between your pandu and sampa or between a and c between a and c that is your recombination clear everyone understood till here any doubt here yes linkage is the physical association between linkage is the physical association between two genes on a chromosome okay two genes on a chromosome understood understood tell me in the chat everyone understand what is linkage everyone understand what is linkage yes yes recombination is the non parental combination non parental co combination what is linkage students linkage is nothing but linkage is nothing but physical association between physical association association between two genes on a chromosome is linkage what is recombination recombination is nothing but combination of non parental combination that is a combin recombination is combination of non parental type don't worry i will explain again later on ravindra did you understand ask me again linkage see both of them are together linkage is high recombination is low means pandu will never leave but as soon as champa is gone pandu is finding someone that is recombination is very high but linkage between them is very low linkage between them is very low which part ask me which part students this is very important if you understand this particular concept if you understand this particular concept that is linkage is inversely proportional to recombination this diagram becomes very easy this diagram becomes very 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 easy very easy i'm telling you okay if you understand if you understand this particular concept of linkage the next the table becomes very easy for all of you okay clear done now listen to me very carefully now listen to me very carefully there can be one numerical from here there can be one numerical from here students i am making you write so many formulas i am making you write so many formulas so please write down those formulas because i want all of you to make a formula list see in physics you make formula list right in physics you make formula list in bio also you need to make formula list right here the formula list is what recombination frequency what is the formula for recombination frequency it is number of recombinants how many recombinants are there divided by total number of progenies divided by total number of progenies for example if they can give you in the examination parental are going to be your parental parent parental they'll give you two parental capital t capital t small t small t recombinants are what capital t small t capital t small t these two are recombinants these two are parental right or they can give you or they can also give you a dihybrid cross 
they can give you a dihybrid cross. Remember dihybrid cross. Remember dihybrid cross, students. Where the dihybrid cross go? Remember dihybrid cross we just did. Mm -hmm. Here, I told you here. Remember, these two are parental. Now, students in the examination, in the examination, they can give you different value. Yes, they can give you different value. Here, I have written 3 and 3. For your recombinant, I have given you 3 and 3. Parental will be here. These two are parental. Clear? So, in the examination, they can give you values for parental, values for recombinant. You need to identify which is recombinant. Recombinant will be mostly heterozygous in nature. Yes, recombinant is going to be heterozygous in nature. And once you find which is recombinant, once you find which is recombinant, you need to use this formula. You need to use this formula. Number of recombinants, number of recombinants divided by total number of offsprings, total number of offsprings into 100, you will get recombinant frequency. Don't worry, I will be making sure you solve such numericals on a separate video. Okay? Done? Cool? Okay. <clears throat> now, can I make you understand? Can I make you understand this particular diagram? Can I make you understand? So, for you to understand this particular diagram, I want everyone, I want everyone to open your NCRT right now because this may not be clear to all of you now. This may not be clear to all of you. Yes? No, board, not before board exam. After board exam, I will teach you. Because in board examination, they will never ask you recombinant frequency. Board examination, they will never ask you recombinant frequency. Board exam, simple questions. All of you open your book right now. Page number 38. Okay, open your book right now, all of you. In this chapter, no delayed topics. Everything is there. Open your book, all of you. Done? Okay. <clears throat> now here, there are, I will be teaching you one cross. I will be teaching you one cross. Second cross, you can understand by understanding the first cross. Okay, but I will be telling you significance of both. I will be telling you significance of both the cross also. Listen to me very carefully. Now here, there is the first cross. This is the first cross. In the first cross, we have, it is a cross between body color and eye color. That is, can you see, wild type, this one is, wild type is dominant so which is dominant here the dominant is your body color is brown and eye color is red that is can you see here but the one is your that there is a cross between it is a cross between body color and eye color so one organism one one of your fruit fly one of the fruit fly will have what one of the wild type will have what one of the wild type will have these traits wild type will have what wild type will have brown body and red eye can you see this one this wild type has what brown body and red eye now what about this one this one can you see this like second one parent that will have yellow body and white color eye it will have what yellow body and white color eye here white and yellow you can see yellow and white you might have written here yellow and white that is yellow and white that is body color is yellow eye color is white clear right on the top of this this is going to be this entire this is your recessive this one is your dominant this one is your dominant following till now now all you need to do is cross it over what now you need to do is cross it over so when crossing over happens what happens here when the crossing over is happening can you see here when the crossing over is happening you can see here Capital Y and Y and W are constant. This part here, the top part is retained as such. Top part is retained as such. But this Y plus and W plus has come down. That is crossing, that is cross has happened here. That is one gamut from here has come here. And this one, the below one that is capital Y here and Y chromosome is here. That is your F1 generation. That one is your F1 generation, a crossing over has happened, linkage has happened. Okay. But what is the difference here? The difference which you need to notice here is, 
this one was your female this one was your male in the case of your parent in the case of parent male was dominant in the case of your in the case of your parent male was dominant but in the case of f1 generation in the case of f1 generation female is dominant here can you see here capital uh, y plus and w plus is here y chromosome nothing is there no genes are here and it becomes recessive that is the first point which you need to notice here the first point which you need to notice here is the female becomes dominant here and the male becomes recessive the next point the, the most important point from this particular cross here is the two different genes on this chromosome two different genes that is y and w are they close to each other are they close to each other yes sir so can i say their linkage is very high linkage is very high but recombination is going to be very low recombination is going to be very low can you see here parental type parental type is very high but recombination type is very low what is the meaning of parental type parental type is basically your linkage there is no recombination offspring looks just like the parents offsprings will looks just like the parents here but your recombination is very low here but if you look at this cross if you look at this cross here the two different chromosomes sorry two different genes the two different genes here are separated that is linkage is less here can you see here here linkage is little bit less here so recombination is what recombination is little bit high here recombination is little higher can you see parental and recombination is 37.2 percent that is the first that is the first that is the first point which second point which you need to note that is linkage is high recombination is low if the linkage is only very high recombination if the linkage is linkage is also linkage is very low linkage is very low here recombination will be high here is that point clear to all of you is that point clear to all of you tell me in the chat right now before i go for this part before i just explain you this part till here everything is clear till here everything is clear yes okay now what is happening here what is happening in this part here what is happening here <clears throat> what is happening in this particular part in this particular f2 generation there is a cross in the f1 there is a cross in the f1 here listen to me very carefully what is happening here what is the cross i'm talking about here is listen to me very carefully can this particular chromosome can this sir will it not be greater than the parent see here no 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 it will be same almost it is the see if it is very far then it will be greater than parent if the crew chromosomes are very far then it will be greater than parent is it too far no they are not very far okay now here if you notice here if you notice when this chromosome is crossing with when this chromosome is crossing with this chromosome are we obtaining this product yes done when this chromosome is crossing is uh, linking with when this chromosome is crossing with this chromosome is pairing up with this chromosome are we obtaining this where is that here done now when this y chromosome is linking with this one are we obtaining this done this chromosome is obtain crossing with this one are you obtaining this one yes this is what we are obtaining that is what they are telling the parental type in this is what happening in the parental type the crossing over is happening like this in the parental type see when first chromosome here listen to me very carefully the first chromosome here capital y y and w is crossing over with the first chromosome here not crossing over it is pairing up 
not crossing over it is pairing up it is basically pairing up do we obtain this yes we obtain this when this chromosome is pairing up with this chromosome what do we get this is the product here yes when this y chromosome is pairing up with this y, y chromosome this chromosome we are obtaining this one product when this y, y chromosome is pairing up with this wild type are we obtaining this yes we are obtaining that all they are telling you is different types of pairing up here and different types of progenies here till here it is just pairing up there is no type of crossing over here there is no type of crossing over here it is just pairing up till now it is just pairing up till now student any doubt in this part any doubt in this part tell me right now any doubt in this paragraph students you need to do this if you do, if you just listen to the lecture you will, you will not understand this open your open your textbook and draw like this and tell open your textbook and draw and understand if you just listen to my v it will not understand this part if you just do, even i you should draw this and understand okay the next one the next one is even very simple now what is happening understood now what you need to do is in the second one there is something called as crossing over is happening can we have a crossing over like this yes sir we can have a crossing over like this so when these two chromosomes cross over what do we get we get something called as like this that is this y can cross over the w this y can cross over this w plus y and w plus and this y plus can cross over with this w which is w so can we obtain this type of chromosome now can we obtain this type of chromosome now if there is crossing over is happening can we obtain this type of chromosomes that is y w plus y w plus y plus and w can we obtain yes we can obtain sir now again try to cross it with this wild type now cross again what do we get now y w plus this chromosome is pairing up with this this chromosome is pairing up with y w where do we have y w plus and y w here got it first one here this particular y w plus is pairing up with this y chromosome yes that is y w plus pairing up with the y chromosome y w plus pairing up with the y chromosome yes sir done now this second chromosome y plus w y plus w is pairing up with the first one that is your y w plus where is it now check 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 y w plus sure y w plus and y w third one got it and fourth one is what y w plus is crossing with the y1 this is the fourth one this is the fourth one students this is basically crossing over which is happening here in the first cape just it is the pairing up with the parents second case what is happening in the second case there is crossing over is happening and we get a separate type of pairing up crossing over product the second crossing over product is pairing up with the f1 generation pairing up with the f1 generation students you will not understand this by just watching the video not understand this you will understand but you will forget later on you will forget it later on but in order to actually understand this particular you know entire diagram you need to do the cross sit take a notebook and start doing the pairing up and if you have not understood till now please rewatch the last 10 minutes and understand this concept here okay try this so the main concept here is going to be your parental and recombinant more linkage less recombination less linkage more recombination that is your main concept here to take okay now let's see what all did we understand from here let's see what all did we understand from this particular linkage and recombination okay what do we understand morgan observed that the two genes the two genes morgan observed that the the two genes did not segregate independently 
uh, independently of each other. That is, there was no independent assortment in some cases. Okay, did not separate indi separate separate out. That is, the F two ratio deviated from the nine is to three is to one. That is, the F two ratio is not nine is three is to one in all the cases. It can show variations. Morgan attributed this as physical association or linkage of the two genes. Use the term recombination to describe the generation of non-parental gene combination. When genes are grouped on the same chromosome, some genes are very tightly linked. That is, linkage is very high. Very low recombination. If they are loosely linked, that is, linkage is less. Recombination will be very high. Recombination will be very high. Okay, clear? Exactly, exactly. Now, students, please sit. Students, if I do sit and do entire linkage, it will take next thirty minutes. It will take next twenty minutes, and it will not be a, your like you know. You can also do it on your own. If you are still finding it difficult to do this linkage, see, I explained one side. I explained one side. One pairing up with the one one, second with the second one. You sit and do it. Watch my video one more time. Tell me what sir. Tell see what sir I have told, and you will be understand this part. Okay. Now, the genes controlling. See here, very important. Genes controlling the body color and eye color were very tightly linked. Yes, here. Body color, body color, and eye color. The genes were very tightly linked. That is. The two D genes on a chromosome linkage is very high here. Can you see? Both of them are very close here. Linkage is very high. Yes, very linked and showed only one point three percent recombination. So linkage is very high. Recombination was very low. Recombination was very low. Genes controlling the eye color and wing size, the second cross, loosely linked. That is, the two genes were separated out. The two genes were separated. Meaning is what? The two genes were separated means linkage was very less. Recombination will be high. Linkage was less, so loosely linked linkage was less, and show thirty seven point two percent of recombination. Recombination was very high. Inversely proportionate relationship. Clear? Amazing. Now. There is one concept here where question has come last two year, last last year, uh, genetic map, gene mapping. Now, students, gene mapping. I'll tell you how to actually map a gene in the numerical session. Right now, learn the theory behind it. Who gave the mapping? Right? Who gave the gene mapping? Gene mapping was given by your Alfred Stewart Wendt. Alfred Stewart Wendt was a uh, you know what I say, student of T H uh, Morgan. Morgan student Alfred Stewart Wendt mapped the genes position on the chromosome. He mapped which gene is present where on a chromosome. This is present here, centi Morgan or ten centi Morgan away. That they mapped out on a chromosome. He used frequency of recombination between the genes pairs on the same chromosome as measure of the distance between the genes. That is frequency, gene frequency. He used something called as gene frequency to find out how much distance each gene is at. For example. One we have one gene here. We have one gene here. For example, they can be five centi Morgan, five centi Morgan apart. We have gene A again, and we have gene C here. They are seven centi Morgan apart. So we can can I tell between these two genes? Between these two genes, the B gene will be somewhere here. That is five centi Morgan apart. That is called <coughs> that is called as your gene mapping. That is called as your gene. Mapping, okay, gene mapping. That is sequence or whole genome. And this gene mapping, this gene mapping was utilized in the Human Genome Project. It is used in the Human Genome Project. <clears throat> the next concept is your polygenetic inheritance. The next concept is your polygenetic inheritance. Very easy concept again. Can we start? Can we start polygenetic inheritance?
so for an ideal case linkage is high linkage is high it will be mono hybrid and if it is high it will be dihybrid you are telling me basically if the linkage is high it's going to be mono hybrid nothing like that see students now linkage is basically it does not follow your mendelian genetics linkage it follows your other type of genetics that is your chromosomal genetics okay forget linkage and recombination don't try to connect it with mono hybrid dihybrid okay clear <clears throat> polygenetic inheritance is very simple very very easy very very easy what does it say it says that one trait it says that one trait is controlled by many genes oh, oh, oh what is happening what is happening it says that one trait it says that one trait one trait is controlled by one trait is controlled by many genes one trait is controlled by many genes that is nothing but your polygenic inheritance now students tell me this particular polygenic inheritance is it solely dependent on uh, solely dependent on your uh, genetics no the uh, the best example here is your intelligence if your parents are intelligent there is a very high chance that you will also be intelligent but does your mother say in the in the childhood they will still be telling you eat more almonds eat more walnut do they tell you do your parents tell eat more almonds eat more walnut why because intelligence is a type of inheritance intelligence is a type of your polygenic inheritance which can be influenced by environmental factors it can be influenced by environmental factors environmental factors also environmental factors also play a role in the polygenic inheritance polygenic inheritance that is one trait is one trait is expressed by many genes one trait is expressed by many genes example I told you already example I already told you what is example again example is nothing but your famous example is your human skin color that is your parents your mother can be full white your dad can be full white there is a very high chance that you will also be full white but what if you go sit in the sun 24 hours will you get tanned yes you will get tanned environmental factors also play a role there environmental factor also play a role there the other one is your human height human height human height also environmental factors play a role that is the good diet lot of pull ups skipping all that increases the height all that increases height so almond thing is not a myth almond thing is actually not a myth it has a lot of benefits okay so human height like imagine if you are what you are age 17 now imagine if you are like a little bit short if you think your parents are short you will also be short no there is a very high chance you can also be taller than your parents how good diet high testosterone level in boys increase the testosterone level by working out a little go to increase the increase the level of testosterone do a lot of pull ups skipping height can actually increase up to your 21 years old up to your 10 21 years old okay now here there is one particular separate speciality about your polygenetic inheritance one speciality about your polygenetic inheritance is what genetics is height yes genetics is height but genetic your height can also be influenced by environmental factors also height can also be influenced by environmental factors imagine if you do not have a good diet they ask you to drink a lot of milk why bone density increase bone length increases milk eat a lot of good food lot of skipping lot of high lot of you know pull ups at this age height can actually increase a little it is mostly genetics but environmental factors can also play a role there okay 
the other one is your the effect of the effect of each allele each allele is additive the effect of each allele is additive right is uh, is it is it is uh, additive in nature yes it is additive in nature now what is the meaning of this particular line the effect of each allele is additive can anyone in the chat tell me what is the meaning of this tell me does anyone know my legs are hurting a little what is the meaning that all effect of each allele is additive simple example i'll give you simple example i'll give you for example human skin color human skin color right the human skin color very simple example the human skin color is actually influenced by three genes human skin skin color is influenced by three different genes here yes we have gene a gene b and gene c gene a gene b and gene c yes sir that is many genes are influencing one trait many genes are influencing one trait three different genes one trait now students if one particular if one particular human has capital a capital a capital b capital b and capital b capital c he will have or she will have darkest skin darkest skin what if there is something like capital a small a capital b capital b capital c capital c a little more lighter version of this capital a capital a <coughs> capital b capital b much more lighter skin lighter skin what if there is a condition there is even more lighter skin even more lighter skin are you seeing more number of more number of alleles are present more number of dominant alleles are present the effect is becoming more stronger the effect is becoming more and more stronger effect is becoming more and more stronger here for example if one person has small a small a small b small c and small b small c what will happen in this case this will lead to albinism this will lead to albinism full fair full fair there will be not even a small even the hair will become uh, hair will become you know white that is small a small a small b there is no dominant gene here there is no dominant gene at all so the more number of dominant genes more stronger is the effect that is the effect of each allele is additive in nature effect of each allele is additive in nature done yes students done now what is pleiotropy sir can sir can you explain me pleiotropy very simply very simple manner yes that is it is complete opposite it is complete opposite here of your polygenic that is single gene here single gene is responsible for many traits can you hear me check 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 yes sir akesh tell me if a single gene 
मल्टीपल कैरेक्टर्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एज योर प्लियोट्रोपी एग्जाम्पल इज फीनाइल किटनोरिया एग्जाम्पल इज फीनाइल किटनोरिया अंडरस्टूड वैष्णवी यस दैट इज योर प्लियोट्रोपी ना वॉट इज फीनाइल किटनोरिया आई विल एक्सप्लेन वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट योर डिसीज इज जस्ट कमिंग अप नाउ विच इज कमिंग अप राइट नाउ ओके क्लियर नाउ नाउ नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज सेक्स डिटर्मिनेशन ब्रेक यू वॉन्ट ब्रेक स्टूडेंट्स डू यू वॉन्ट ब्रेक अगले से टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक आफ्टर द टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक वी विल डू सेक्स डिटर्मिनेशन पेडिग्री एनालिसिस एंड द लास्ट टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज गॉन बी डिसऑर्डर्स ओके ओके कुल नेक्स्ट विल बी डूइंग सेक्स डिटर्मिनेशन now the time is just ask how is the preparation going on how is your is your board interfering with your uh, need preparation are you able to manage all the chapters or do you have do you have any chapters which are so difficult right now you are not able to understand in biology yes tell me is there any chapter in biology which is you are like so it is so difficult right now to understand yes manage you can manage superb yes amazing that's really good to hear Which is that one chapter in biology that you will be like, no sir, no, we are biotech, really, biotech, really. Tum bhai easy, sorry, it's very easy, very very easy. It's very easy. Don't worry, I'll be, uh, ma'am, go pick up ma'am, and I'll be teaching you biotech, and we'll make it very easy for all of you. We'll make it very 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 only. Cell second cell division. Oh my God, cell second cell division is so easy. Just watch my lecture of two hours. it is just a lecture of 2 hours you can understand the chapter so detailed just in 2 hours okay clear so with that being said can we start some sex determination can we determine some sex here okay so with that being said show some energy in the chat because if i see more energy in the chat i will be more energetic and you'll not feel sleepy in this class okay so if you want me to ener- be energetic and if you want me to you know explain you with so much of enthusiasm and passion show some energy in the chat that will directly correlate okay so students which is the scientist who comes to your mind when you think about sex determination which is the scientist the one scientist which everyone should you know think of under when you understand sex determination when you think about sex determination is is your hanking is the scientist name is hanking is hanking that is in the year 1891 um, yes in 1891 hanking did a certain type of experiment hanking did a some type of experiment now what was this experiment what was done by hanking very interesting hanking was working on insects he was working on different insects he he noticed that after spermatogenesis after spermatogenesis he noticed that after spermatogenesis 50% of sperms 50% of sperms received received or they had a nuclear a special type of a nuclear what to say nuclear envelope 50% had a nuclear structure had a nuclear structure the rest 50% rest 50% of sperm did have anything it did not have anything he understood there is something in 50% of sperm that it some kind of structure is present in other 50% of sperm that structure is not present now what is this struct what is this he did not he could not find that time he could not ident- identify that time what was this you know structure which is present on top the structure which is present on top on your 50% of chromosomes he called it x body he called it x body like in math you have right whatever you don't know you make it x right in math you know right if you don't know something find x find y you tell that right find x so he called it as x body because he did not know what it was but later on it was found out later on it was found that it was nothing but it was nothing but your x chromosome it was nothing but the 
X chromosome. This was later on. Later on, it was found that it was nothing but the X chromosome itself. It was X chromosome itself. Now, students, in your examination, there was a P by Q. There was a P by Q on bar body. P by Q on bar body. Does anyone know what is this bar body? Not in NCRT, but there was a P by Q. Why not Y? Y was not fancy. X is more important. How in your life X is more? You still think about your X? No. Similarly, that's why they, they kept X here. Okay. Now, what is this bar body? Sometimes what happens is in certain females, okay, in certain females, there could be presence of inactive. There could be presence of inactive form of X chromosome. Inactive form of X chromosome. Inactive form of X chromosome. Now, this inactive form of X chromosome, this inactive form of X chromosome is called as your bar body. But there was a numerical. There was a numerical. How do you find bar body? Very simple. Bar body can be found by nothing but your X minus 1. X minus 1 is your bar body. For example, in the case of normal females, in the case of normal females, we have XX chromosome. The bar body is going to be how many? That is 1 minus, uh, it will be 2 minus 1, that's going to be 1 bar body. In the case of your XY chromosome, that is, in the case of male, it's going to be 1 minus 1, 0. Yes, minus 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. In the case of your Klein-Fenter syndrome, it's going to be what? 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is going to be 1 again. Yes. In the case of your Turner syndrome, it's going to be X0. That's going to be what? 1 minus 1. That's going to be 0. That is your bar body. There can be a PYQ from this inactive X chromosome. What is it? Inactive X chromosome. How do you find it? X minus 1. How do you find it? X minus 1. Just for PYQ sake, it is not given you NCRT. But if you go look up previous your need question, there has been a question on bar body. That's why explaining it. Okay. Now, the next one is your heterogamity or heterogamity. Now, what is heterogamity? Heterogamity basically tells hetero means different type of gametes, different type of chromosomes. So, different type of chromosomes, for example, in the case of human male, it the different type of chromosomes are present in male, that is XY. Female has XX, same type of chromosome, same type of chromosome. So, if you talk about heterogamity, in the case of male, male heterogamity, direct question can come in your examination. Male heterogamity is same in the case of your humans and also grasshopper. Also seen in the case of the grasshopper. What about here in the case of male? You have XX in the case of female. XY in the case of male, that is your heterogamity. In the case of uh, grasshopper, we have XX in the case of your female and XO in the case of male, XO in the case of male. Diet question, male heterogeneity is found where? Grasshopper and human, grasshopper and human. Diet question from, diet question can come like this. A diet question can come like this. What about female heterogamity? Where do you find? Chat tell me quickly. Quickly tell me in the chat, where do you find female heterogamity? The first one I'll give you is clue is the birds. The second one is in the case of your butterfly. Butterfly. That is ZW and ZZ. In the case of the birds. In the case of birds, this is the female. Female will have, will have two different types of chromosome. Female will determine the sex of the child. Will determine the sex of the child. Here it is Z0 and ZZ in the case of butterfly. In the case of butterfly that is zero and zz that is female this is the female that is male symbol is the female clear butterfly direct question it can come like this yes direct question can come like this you need to know the simple table all of you can you can remember this right simple table dot table like this and you will be able to understand now that is male and female. But there is something called as your haplo. This is interesting. There is something called as haplo. One second, students. 
कलर कलर विच कलर हैप्लो डिप्लॉइड ना वॉट इज हैप्लो डिप्लॉइड इन नाउ वॉट इज दिस फैंसी समथिंग न्यू ना वॉट इज हैप्लो डिप्लॉइडी दिस इज वेरी सिम दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दिस इज वेयर द क्वेश्चन कैन ऑल्सो कम फ्रॉम हैप्लो डिप्लॉयडी इज सीन इन द केस ऑफ यूर हनी बीस इट इज सीन इन द केस ऑफ हनी बीस सीयर लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुल स्टूडेंट्स After this particular, you know, flow chart, you will never forget this honeybee combination. Ready? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. What happens in the case of your honeybee? In the case of sweet bee or honeybee. In the case of honeybee, we have the female, female where two n is is two n is thirty two. Two n is thirty two here. Female will produce egg. Egg will be have chromosomes chromosomes. Sixteen chromosomes. Yes, we have male. Male will produce sperm. Yes, sperm will also have sixteen chromosome. When this sperm and this egg meets, when this sperm and this egg meets, what will be the result? What will be the result? The result is very simple. The result is a female child. Result is a female child. Now this female honeybee can have two types. If it has, you know, that something called as uh, forgot the name, when some particular properties there, this female can be a queen, queen, or it can be worker, queen or worker. Till here, any doubt? Ask me. Till here, any doubt? Ask me right now. male and female egg and sperm 16 chromosomes 16 chromosome which will result in female that is again 32 chromosomes 32 chromosome the female can be queen or it can be a worker bee yes very simple sir till now very simple now students what can happen is this particular female egg this egg can undergo parthenogenesis it can undergo what it can undergo partheno genesis when this particular egg undergoes parthenogenesis it will result in a male which will have again 16 chromosomes 16 chromosomes is maintained here in the case of male and the male is called as what drone the male is called as drone simple yes sir very simple now i'll make you few write down few points tell me if you are understanding those points yes now can i tell can i tell this particular drone since it developed from the female there is no father since it developed from this male developed from a female like directly does not have any father yes sir does not have any father this particular drone it is sterile in nature sterile in nature even though this particular drone here male can produce the sperm but that sperm will result in a female only so it will not have any sons it will not have any sons yes because it will this sperm will produce, develop into a female only yes now but it can have what it can have something called as grandfather sir how sir he does not have any father but how can it has grandfather listen to me very carefully this drone or the male bee was developed from a female yes from the female but the female was developed from where the female was developed from male so this there is no father but it can have a grandfather see here this drone will not have any father but it can have a grandfather it can have a grandfather but can this particular drone has grandson can have a can it have a grandson yes that is this particular drone this particular drone right here he will produce the sperm will produce the sperm the sperm will fuse with the egg this uh, egg and fuse with the form a female so till here no father no father right 
and this is the grandfather uh, but this female will will produce under undergo parthenogenesis will produce the male drogen that is your grandson so this drone has no father but it has a but the same drone no father but the same drone can produce a female that female can produce a son that is your grandson so he can have grandson no father no son only grandfather and only grandson only grandson here see here male is undergoing uh, this is your meiosis this is mitosis this is mitosis clear this is undergoing this is basically mitosis okay Any doubt here, students? What is a drone? Drone is something. Now, drone is nothing but male honeybee. Drone is nothing but male honeybee. Drone is nothing but male honeybee. Okay. Clear. Any doubt in this particular uh, honeybee sex determination? I hope not. The next one is mutation. The next concept is mutation. Now, what is this mutation? Mutation, all of you know, if you learn, if you attended yesterday's Gopika Mams class, all of you know mutation is nothing but mutation is nothing but sudden inheritable change. Yes, that is alternation of your genes is happening. Like you know, Spider-Man is a mutant, technically. Yes, he's a mutant. You have your mutants, you have X-Men mutants, we have Ulverine who is a mutant. Yes. You have Professor Xavier who is a mutant. What is mutant? Mutant is basically, there is an alternation. There is an alternation in the DNA. Alternation in DNA. What is mutation? Sudden inheritable change. What is the definition of mutant? Mutation is nothing but sudden inheritable change. Sudden inheritable change is mutation. Is mutation. Now, students, mutation can be of many types. Mutation can be of many types. If I write, if I write down the heading called as types of mutation, if, uh, types of mutation, mutation is broadly actually two types, but for convenience, it is actually two types. For convenience, we'll write three types now. For convenience, we'll write three types. One is called as your, one is called as what is what is called as your zoom. Uh, complete change in the genome change in the genome second one is your change in, that is change in the chromosome that is called as your chromosomal aberration chromosomal aberration the third one is change in dna that is mutation change in dna change in DNA, change in DNA also called as gene mutation, also called as what? Gene mutation, also called as what? Gene mutation, also called as gene mutation. Listen to me very carefully. The first one change in genome, the first one is called as change in genome can be further divided into two types, can be further divided into two types. One is called as a neoploidy. One is called as your a neoploidy. Other one is called as euploidy. Other one is called as euploidy. Now, what is this a neoploidy? A neoploidy or e neoploidy is something but change in the chromosome number. That is, there could be addition of a chromosome or a deletion of a chromosome. Yes. There could be addition of a chromosome or a deletion of chromosome, which we we'll learn later on in the, in the disease. For example, in your Klein, in your Klein-Finter syndrome, there is addition of a chromosome. X chromosome is added. Yes, that is called as monosome. Uh, that is called as your monosome. And in the case of your Turner syndrome, one chromosome is missing. 
yes in chromosome in your uh, in your turner syndrome one chromosome is missing that is your uh, again type of your a uh, neoploidy uh, that it is actually further divided into hypo and for convenience i should not tell you but well, this is important this is enough that is something called as hypoploidy and hyperploidy it can be further divided into hyperploidy and hypoploidy confusion too much not required okay till here you should know what is your eploidy eploidy is complete set of chromosomes is increasing complete set of a chromosome is duplicating complete set of chromosome is duplicating duplicating in euploidy okay now what is this chromosome elaboration that is here there can be change in chromosome structure change in chromosome structure that is a y chromosome can look very differently yes there can be change in chromosome structure there can be change in gene number there can be change in gene number and even the sequence can change here yes even sequence can change here that is your chromosomal abrasion the last one is your change in dna that is point mutation and frame shift mutation point mutation also frame shift mutation frame shift mutation any doubt here any doubt here ask me students this is very important write down this ncert is telling you but it is very scattered the information is here and there i am compiling the information for you making the notes for you on live so make down write down all this information okay that is very important now pedigree i have an amazing for you students how many of you struggle with pedigree tell me how many of you struggle with pedigree after today's class you can solve any question pedigree after today's class right now after today's class you can solve any question on pedigree that is my guarantee to you okay okay that is my guarantee to you ready ready for pedigree analysis are you ready for pedigree analysis ready pedigree analysis very quick very very easy i have amazing tricks for you please write down these tricks and it's going to be very easy for you any question on pedigree you can solve okay that is my guarantee first of all before we go to the trick understand what is pedigree analysis now that is analysis of traits in you know in several generations of family called as pedigree analysis basically we are uh, you know analyzing different different types of traits all this not be asked in examination <laughs> different analyzing different different traits is called as your pedigree analysis board exam yes they can ask you in board exam okay inheritance of a particular trait is represented in a family tree over a generation so inheritance of particular trait is express, expressed in the form of a family tree here in human genetics it provides a strong tool helps in tracing the inheritance of a specific trait abnormality or disease so basically with the help of pedigree analysis we can find abnormalities in a family okay abnormalities in a family now students here where will the question come from where will the question come from pedigree analysis last to last year question i come yes the question can come from where question can come from this all the symbols all the symbols especially these ones especially these ones especially these symbols are very important question can come from following symbols here so please students read the symbol see i can't explain the symbols can i explain you what is this this is your can i explain what is this no that is your this is your mail square is your mail or i can tell you that yes but it's up to you to decide if you want marks from this pedigree analysis you need to know this one but where can i help you this is where i can help you this is where i can actually help you students i'm going to make you write down some small small tricks so please write down this tricks that is how to identify how to identify a particular pedigree is it autosomal dominant it is autosomal recessive is it x linked dominant or is it x linked recessive or is it y linked how do you identify basically from this one slide here you should be able to follow 
every single question of pedigree analysis. Okay, the first one is your autosomal. How do you tell if a particular a particular pedigree is autosomal dominant? So, students, first point here is autosomal dominant. Don't skip generation. That is autosomal dominant. If a particular pedigree is said to be autosomal dominant, it will not skip generation. It will not skip generation. The second point here is affected, affected parents, affected parents can have unaffected children. Affected parents can have unaffected children. But sir, you just told me they don't skip generation. How is this rule applicable then? Students, one parent can have multiple children, right? One parent can have multiple children. Yes, that is, affected parents can have unaffected children. Parents can be unaffected, but progeny is affected here. Okay? Progeny is unaffected here. Affected parents, parents will be affected. Progeny can be unaffected. Progeny can be unaffected. Okay? That is the first point here. Two points very important here. Recessive. Recessive is it will skip generation. It will skip generation. It will skip generation. An unaffected parent. Unaffected parents. Unaffected parents can have affected children. Clear? Recessive one will do what? Recessive one will do what? It will skip generation and also unaffected parents. Here, ulta of this. Unaffected parents can have affected children. Very important. Okay? That is this first, that is the first part. That is the first part. Now, what about your X-linked? X-linked is what? It will all, it will never it will never in x linked dominant in x linked dominant it will never go from father to son it will never go from father to son once in students it will never go from father to son and all daughters of affected father all the daughters all the daughters of affected father will be affected. If father is affected, daughter is going to be affected. Very important line. Yes, sir. Very important line. And here, third point I should add here, more females are affected here. More females are affected here. More females are affected here. Okay. More females are affected here. The next one, X-linked receive disease. In X-linked recessive, that is, more males are affected here. More males are affected in the X-linked recessive. More males are affected. Along with that, it will always go from, it will always go from mother to son or it will go from father to daughter. Always go from mother to son or it will go from father to daughter. Always. Mother to son or father to daughter. That is the pattern here. Here, the third point here is, it will never transfer. The disease will never transfer from the father to son. Never, it will be from, disease will never transfer. The disease will never transfer from the disease will never transfer from father to son. Never. Never transfer from father to son. Yes, the reason for all this, the reason for all this is going to be from chromosomes. Look at the chromosomes and you can understand. Here I am giving you trick students. Every single one has around 2 to points, 3 3 points which you need to remember if you want to solve pedigree. Okay. If you want to solve pedigree. The fourth one here is D. I think I forgot to mention here is D1 is your Y linked. 
while linked what happens in while linked students in while linked is male to male that's all obviously chromosome will never go to female it is going to be your male to male male to male transfer while linked is male to male transfer so students if you really want to solve pedigree i will give you this notes i will give you this notes i will provide you this notes on the telegram channel okay but i want everyone to make a note of these points what is in dominant what is in recessive what is in x linked what is in your x linked the, the recessive what is happening in y linked now this is very important so please note down this if you really want to solve pedigree analysis otherwise forget pedigree okay otherwise forget pedigree for example if you look here for example if you look here it says that <clears throat> the first one is what autosomal dominant trait this one is autosomal dominant what we write here autosomal dominant don't skip generation it is not skipping any generation yes and we can see that doesn't skip generation and affected parents can have unaffected children can you see here affected parents can have unaffected children here it is not skipping any generation here it is not skip see in this generation also present here also they should be have been present mm, let me check on this affected parents can have students try solving i'll make you solve pedigree you will be able to solve this not skipping generation yes correct only now here let me show you one particular line here of ncert can you see this the example is given here can you see this example for myotonic dystrophy that is autosomal dominant myotonic dystrophy this one from a legend is a pyq it is a pyq here pyq this is a pyq right here the next one is your autosomal recessive that is for your sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is a autosomal recessive is recessive okay that is where is it example is your i think i made a mistake here let me check on the students i think i made a mistake here in this thing if there is a mistake i'll rectify it later on okay is sickle cell anemia that was your that was your pedigree analysis let me just check on that one particular line i think i made one mistake on that line i will check on that don't worry when i'm making you solve questions right may, when i'm making you solve questions on pedigree analysis that time will verify it properly okay don't worry do not worry it's fine okay the last part of the chapter i'm super tired already four hours we are teaching almost the last part is your genetic disorders now students one question can come from genetic disorder directly or indirectly one question i think i have a question book here also here one second yes i have some questions here also for your uh, this thing i have written down some questions for you let me show you the questions for your uh, crossing over okay don't worry pedigree analysis i'll i'll uh, cross verify that line and then i'll, I'll check okay now last part of the chapter is chromosome uh, genetic disorder the last part of the chapter is your genetic disorder how did i go wrong there i think i when i was making the notes i have to check my notes no worry it's there first we'll talk about genetic disorders students the entire genetic disorder can be divided into two types the entire genetic disorder can be divided into two types one is your mendelian genetic disorders one is your mendelian disorders mendelian disorder 
the other one is a chromosomal disorders chromosomal other one is a chromosomal disorder under mendelian disorder which will be studying some of the examples and under chromosomal we will be studying different different examples which we will study one by one the first example here is what the first example is your color blind the first example is your color blind now what is color color blind now what kind of questions can you get here don't worry i'll rectify it again oh my god all of you are so behind pedigree analysis i'll make a separate video on pedigree don't worry oh my god don't cry all of you don't cry it's fine pedigree i'll make a separate 5 minutes video on pedigree how to analyze pedigree analysis with a proper information i might have to cross don't worry i can see some telugu is what is happening what is some telugu is going on in the chat it's fine but focus on this now color blind now what kind of question can they ask in color blind one by one i'll tell you what kind of question they can ask you one by one i'll tell you <clears throat> first is it is <clears throat> it is a sex linked recessive disease yes it is sex linked recessive disease what is happening here defect in either of red or green cone of the eyes that is there in the in the eyes we have cones and rods in the cones there will be a disorder that is the particular human will not be able to differentiate red or green in the traffic they'll keep on going red or red light they'll keep on going don't worry then <clears throat> unable to discrim discriminate between the red and green color and defect is due to the mutation in the gene present in the x chromosome it is a defect in the mutation in the x chromosome very important males suffer more when compared to the female females are usually carriers here females are usually carriers males suffer more here now students this is not they can ask you this question here they can ask you this question or they can ask you this question but in my opinion what kind of question they'll ask you is crosses they can ask you a small type of cross here let me draw this my book i wrote question book don't worry i'll be giving you this questions where is the question where is the question where is the question color blind question i wrote one question no i shall return the question on the board only ha huh, the question is here the question goes like if a friends try to solve this question try to solve this question all of you the question goes like if color blind man if a what why is it not writing ha huh. if a color blind color blind man marries color blind man marries a girl color blind man marries a girl with normal vision with normal vision color blind man marries a girl with a normal vision what is the number of <clears throat> how many girl what will be the progeny which you obtain in the f2 generation what will be the what <clears throat> what is the progeny obtained what is the progeny of f2 what will be the progeny of f2 what will be the progeny of f2 what will be seen in f2 they can give you percentage here or they can give you direct questions here what will happen in f2 f2 generation see here first we have the parents are down you should do a cross like this what are the parents parents is your let's take girl first <clears throat> normal vision girl will have a normal vision so she will have x6 chromosome the gametes will be what the gametes are going to be x and x that is the ova these are the 
gametes. These are the gametes. Now let's take the male, color blind male, color blind male. What will be his chromosome? His chromosome will be C and Y because it is X linked. Remember, it is it will affect mutation on the X chromosome. Mutation will be only on X chromosome. So mutation is present on where? Mutation is present here on the X chromosome. Array, yeah. Mutation is present on X chromosome. What will be the gametes here? The gametes are going to be X to the power of C, one gamete, and this will be one gamete here. Yes, this will check, 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 check. Are you able to hear me, students? No sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. No sound. We can hear you, right? You can hear me, right? See, your X, C. Affected. This is colorblind male. This is colorblind male. Colorblind is normal vision. Let's do a cross now. Let's do a cross. Here. What are the gametes here? X. X and X to the power of C and Y. What do we get here? X, C, X, C. Yes. This is going to be X, Y. This is going to be X, Y. X, Y. So, what do we obtain in F2? F2? What do we obtain in F2? In F2, we obtain two carrier girls. See, only C1 is present. If both are present, then only the female will be affected. And that chance is very rare. So, we will have two carrier girls and we will have, do they have any C on top of them? No. So, two will be normal boys. Now, students, they can ask you in the examination, they can ask you the percentage. That is, what is the percentage of Normal boys here, hundred percent are normal here. Hundred percent are normal here. Questions can come like this. Question can come like this. That is fifty percent. So out of this, clear. <clears throat> so when you talk about boys, it's gonna be only for these two. That is hundred percent. Okay. Oh, one second, students. Now, if they ask you a question, out of the four progenies. Out of the four progenies, how many are carriers? Or what is the percentage of carrier? Out of the four progenies, that time 50% is carrier. That time 50% is carrier. Now, if they ask you a question, out of the F2 generation, how many, what is the percentage of carrier in the female? What is the percentage of carrier in female? 100% is carrier. 100% is carrier in female. But out of the four offsprings, 50% is carrier. Remember this question, read the question carefully. Read the question very carefully that time. Okay. Read the question carefully. Now, students, do you want to do one more question like this? Do you want to do one more question like this? Do you want me to do one more question like this? Tell yes, I have one more question. I have, I have written down one more question. I have written down one more question. If you want, I can show that also. If not, we can go to the next one. One more question. Okay. Now, one more question is, what is it? Let's see. This is a problem. You can't remember the questions easily. Concept can be remembered. Questions can be remembered. Questions can't be remembered. The next question is, if here, carrier girl. Oh, oh, we have a girl is carrier now. We have a carrier girl is marrying. Carrier girl is now marrying. She is marrying. Carrier, carrier girl now marries color blind man. Carrier girl now. Carrier girl is ma marrying a color blind man. That is X. What will be present in F2 now? What will be present in F2? Quit tell me in the chat what will be present in F2 now? What will be present in F2? So every time, students, every single time you get a uh, blood grouping problem, always write and explain. For example, here we have carrier woman. Carrier girl is there. A carrier woman. What will be the gametes here? What will be the gametes? What will be first family? What is the chromosome here for carrier girl? 
x and x to the power of c that is carrier what about color blind color blind is going to be your x to the power of c and y this is going to be color blind now what are the this is going to be your parents what are the gametes here tell me gametes are going to be your uh, x and these are going to be your gametes here the gametes are going to be mm, y gametes now do a cross now do a cross male what do we have x to the power of c and y what do we have in female x and x to the power of c what do we have now x and x c x and y x and y and we have x to the power of c and x to the power of c x to the power of c and x y now tell me what do we find now tell me what do you find here write down here what do you obtain here first thing what is this one is your carrier female first one is your carrier female second one is your normal boy normal boy third one is your affected affected girl or female the fourth one is going to be what affected male affected male did you even get the same thing one normal boy same thing tell me same thing same thing now they can ask you percentage based on this they can ask you percentage what is the percentage of affected boys here now if there are out of the two boys out of the two boys one is affected so the percentage of affected boys is going to be 50 percent now what is the percentage of affected boy you know unaffected boys 50 percent what is the percentage of your carrier female here carrier female is going to be 25 percent what is the percentage of your affected girl is going to be affected affected sorry 50 percent 50 percent affected girl is going to be 50 percent again affected girl is also going to be 50 percent out of two girls one is affected now if they ask you out of the four offsprings what is the percentage of affected girl 25 percent that time that time 25 percent so this means you can get all sort of questions here based on your color blind okay based on your color blind problems okay are you understanding students this is how the questions will be formed this is how the questions will come okay and students don't worry i'll make you solve more and more problems see as the need is coming closer see you know in biology we we don't have numericals only on this chapter right we have numericals in your molecular basis we have numericals in your cell chapter we have numericals in other chapters also so don't worry as need is coming closer on this channel i will personally make sure okay we will solve all numericals in biology all numericals in biology that is my promise okay i'll make sure it happens pedigree also don't worry pedigree pedigree i will take care i don't know how i went wrong there but i didn't think, i didn't think, i don't think i went wrong i'm not able to just explain properly okay next one is your hemophilia very deadly disease in hemophilia what happens one small cut blood keeps on flowing blood will keep on flowing that is your hemophilia that is the clotting factor that is your anti anti hemophilian globin ahg is not present anti hemophilian globin is not present the blood will keep on flowing blood will keep on flowing that is a single protein that is part of your cascade of protein involved in blood clotting is affected that is your ahg protein hg protein is affected a simple cut will result in non-stop bleeding in the affected individuals heterozygous females carriers for hemophilia may transmit disease to the sons very important line that is affected females affected females will transfer it to the male so students in the case remember queen never got hemophilia queen was a carrier only and only males get affected here only and only males get affected here mostly males females are just carriers here females are just carriers here 
okay the pedigree illness of your queen elizabeth shows the number of hemophilic descendants she was a carrier of the disease possibility of the female becoming hemophilia is extremely rare so the the possibility the possibility of female becoming getting affected is very 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 rare here very rare here okay clear do you want to solve one question on this also want to solve one question on this i think i had a question on this but i don't know if i wrote it down one question was there on this did i write it down mm. It is not a question, it is just explanation. Carrier woman or carrier female, that is going to be your this is going to be a, no a carrier female, this is going to be a normal man, yes, normal man. This man is marrying a carrier woman now. For example, this is your Queen Elizabeth. King is normal. He is marrying the carrier woman. What happens here? What are the gametes which you get here? Gametes which you get here is X and X to the power of H. That is carrier female. Here we are getting gametes is X and Y. Let's do a cross. X, XH, X and Y. What do we get? X is normal female. X, H. We get an, a carrier female here, X, Y, a normal boy here and he, what happens here? Can you see this one? This one is your affected boy, poor boy. This is going to be your affected boy. Here this is going to be carrier female, carrier female, normal and normal, normal and normal okay students they can give you a question again percentage on this they can give you percentage on this also okay and you can get numericals on this also i'll make you solve some other numericals some other time okay this is just concept of understanding okay next one is sickle cell anemia very deadly disease again very deadly disease it is a autosomal linked recessive disease what is it sickle cell anemia is autosomal linked recessive trait it is transmitted from the parent to the offspring when both the parents are carrier for the gene when both the parents are carrier then only this will happen both of them are carrier this will happen okay what happens here that is person has abnormal hemoglobin that is the hemoglobin uh, level will be very low because the blah, the normal shape of rbc is biconcave from biconcave it becomes sickle shape that is from biconcave, biconcave it becomes what? Sickle shape. It becomes sickle shape. That mutation in the HB gene causes the abnormal HB synthesis. That is simple explanation is going to be from your NCRT only. Can you see this is your this is your DNA, this is your mRNA, this is GAG, which is coding for your which is called for your glutamic acid. It is coding for glutamic acid. Now what happens because of one point mutation, because of one point mutation that is happening here, can you see one point mutation, can you see instead of thymine, instead of thymine we have adenine here, instead of thymine we have adenine, what happens? You get GUG here in mRNA, because of GUG it codes for valine at the 6th position, at the 6th position of the beta globin chain, instead of glutamic acid, instead of glutamic acid we have the valine here and because of that it produces a chain polypeptide chain called as HBS it produces what HBS here it was HBA hemoglobin chain A it was, H, it was HBA now it becomes HBS now how is it deadly how is it deadly the deadly is very simple here when we have HBA and HBA it is a normal condition Normal polypeptide chain, no affection. Now, what if we have HBA and HBS? Now, this becomes a carrier. This becomes a carrier. Now, what if the person has HBS and HBS? That is your sickle cell anemic person. 
that is your sickle cell anemic person that is hbs and hbs sickle cell anemic person okay sickle cell anemic person that is appear apparently unaffected but they are, can be carrier that is hba and hbs can be carrier they can also give you questions on this but main question can come from here main question can come from this particular part that is what is the substituting all that question can come from here okay the next one is your thalassemia thalassemia is very simple thalassemia is very simple basically there is a change in your uh, uh, there is a change in your alpha chain and beta chain so all of us know the hemoglobin is made up of two alpha chain and two beta chain there is an abnormality in the chain itself now abnormality in the chain this is quantitative entire chain is gone this is quantitative but here in this a particular one small in the entire chain was proper one small particular particular amino acid was replaced this is qualitative quality is getting uh, affected here quality is getting affected here in here but in the case of your thalassemia in the case of your thalassemia the whole quantity is getting affected whole quantity is getting affected thalassemia is not there huh? i forgot thalassemia is there ha huh. in thalassemia entire quantity is getting affected that is the entire alpha chain is missing or entire beta chain is missing here okay entire alpha chain or entire beta chain is missing and this is a autosomal linked recessive disease autosomal linked, and this is also a blood disorder resulting from inadequate of hemoglobin synthesis inadequate hemoglobin synthesis what is happening here it is transmitted when the both the parents are unaffected carriers for the gene both of them can be unaffected carriers both the carriers coming together thalassemia thalassemia okay it defects defects could be due to the either mutation or deletion that is results in the redu reduction rate of the synthesis of globulin chains that is alpha or beta chain that is two types we can have alpha thalassemia or we can have beta thalassemia now what is happening in alpha and beta very simple very very simple in your alpha thalassemia there are two genes are involved that is your hba2 gene and hba1 gene two genes are involved which are present on your chromosome 16 two genes present on chromosome 16 in this case in alpha thalassemia alpha chain is not working properly alpha chain is not missing alpha chain is missing completely if alpha chain is completely missing beta chain will produce more yes if alpha chain is missing abnormal hb with the in the alpha chain there is abnormal alpha chain beta chain will produce more and more if beta chain is producing more and more that could result in a dimer formation it result in the tetrad or dimer dimer formation tetrad formation that is more accumulation of beta chain that could result that could result of thalassemia the opposite in the case of your beta thalassemia complete opposite in the case of beta thalassemia that is in beta thalassemia beta chain is not working beta chain is like no i will not work so in the beta thalassemia that is hb d gene is there which is present on your chromosome 11 these points are very important and then here there is accumulation over accumulation of alpha chain over accumulation of alpha chain is there here clear over accumulation of alpha chain the next this is your phenyl ketone area very easy again very easy very easy the first point which you need to remember about your phenyl ketone area here is it affected individuals lack so it is a autosomal recessive disease the first important point here is it is a autosomal recessive disease autosomal recessive disease affected individuals lack an enzyme what is its enzyme that is your phenyl alanine hydrolase enzyme phenyl alanine hydrolase enzyme is absent if the enzyme is absent the conversion from phenyl to tyrosine will not happen when the enzyme is present phenyl alanine will get transferred to the tyrosine but in the case of your phenyl ketone area the enzyme is not present which enzyme phenyl ketone phenyl alanine hydrolase enzyme is absent now what happens 
what happens what happens if the phenylalanine is not getting converted to tyrosine now can phenylalanine concentration increase yes sir it can increase that is phenylalanine accumulates and converts into phenyl pyruvic acid phenyl concentration increases and it gets converted to phenyl pyruvic acid now this phenyl pyruvic acid is it good for bad it is good or bad for us it is very bad for us it is very bad accumulation of these in this in the brain results in the mental retardedness cause mental retardedness skin pigmentation and other diseases right it can also it can also excreted through the urine and become poor absorption by kidney poor absorption by kidney clear clear what is the my phone clear that is the entire phenyl ketone area entire phenyl ketone thalassemia is done now now lastly we have three different chromosomal diseases lastly we have three different chromosomal diseases why, why do i see there yeah don't talk so much in the chat what is happening why the students students trust me do not talk to each other talk to me don't talk to each other talk to me i'm going to interrupt the chat so if i look at the chat if i don't see a doubt i'll be like i'll skip i'll skip the chat right i'll skip the chat right next one next one is your down syndrome that is in the case of your chromosomal in the case of your chromosomal diseases we have something called as down syndrome so what is happening in down syndrome what is happening in down syndrome that is trisomy of 21 chromosome that is if you look at your chiro if you look at your chirotyping can you see extra chromosome is there in your 21st chromosome that is called as trisomy of 21 three chromosome are present at the 21st position three chromosome right it occurs both in male and female first described by your langdon don what is happening here 47 autosomes xx and also that is 21 chromosome extra chromosome that is in the case of female in the case of male that is same thing but xy but where will the question come from the question can come from here question can come from trisomy of 21 you should know you should know it is occurs in both in male and female the question can come from what are the characteristics what are the characteristics of your down syndrome what are characteristics that is this disorder hmm, the affected individuals will be short statured with small round head they will be very tiny very tiny they can have a round head very round head and furrowed tongue that is tongue will be outside yes tongue will be outside and partially opened mouth and palm is broad with characteristic palm creases that is palm creases will be there palm creases will be there yes and physio and physio motor and mental development is retarded mental retardedness is retarded students please remember the number of chromosomes here that is extra chromosome 21 is here along with that remember the characteristics here that is all next one is your klein finter syndrome first of all klein finter syndrome only happens in the case of male that is there is an addition of x chromosome here it is a type of your a new ploidy it is a type of a new ploidy occurs only in males extra x chromosome chirotype is going to be what 44 chromosome plus x x y can you see extra x chromosome is here because of this extra chromo extra x chromosome are there any feminine features yes that is it have overall muscle development however feminine development that is development of breast will happen and that condition is called as gynecomastia gynecomastia right that is gynecomastia it is also expressed uh, such as such individuals are sterile in nature such individuals are sterile in nature the last one the last one is going to be your turner syndrome last one is going to be turner syndrome now turner syndrome mainly happens in the case of female and one x chromosome is missing see here only only one x chromosome is here the other x chromosome is missing female 
and what are the you know features in this female the female will have rudimentary ovaries stored stature yes that is check 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 one is coming right such females sterile ovaries rudimentary besides other features including the lack of other secondary sexual characters can also be seen in the case of such female such female sterile female students that is the end of the chapter now students you will ask me sir in today's class there were no questions sir why there were no questions in today's class you can ask me question right and some of them are distracted here we'll forget those people who are distracted but you can ask me sir where are the questions right you might have asked questions i'll show you where are the questions you'll ask me sir where are the questions right see here if you go if you go today's session if you go to today's session here right if you click on more do you do you see this do you see this links do you see this links here do you see this links here first link i'll tell you one by one very important where is the questions here see notes will be added here notes will be added here the first thing you should do is ncrt if you want to do ncrt mm continue with google you just click continue with google and you'll get here see continue with google you'll get here principles of inheritance questions all need pyqs all need pyqs you'll get here can you see questions done the next type of questions next set of questions are going to be your cbse questions who are writing board examinations all the questions for your board examinations with crosses with multiple crosses done here next next is going to be your test so after today's class after today's class i told you you should write a test click here you can join a test start test i am a student teacher i am not allowed here but you can you can join write the test right now right now write the test after this class or tomorrow morning or tomorrow morning okay and ncert solutions if you are if you want for board again all ncert solutions are here every single solution see students students we are not charging you a single rupee to give you pyqs cbc paper ncert solution and even a test we are literally giving you a test for free so it's up to you if you want to talk in the chat and disturb the class or if you want to be are you serious about it if you are serious make utilize of this if you are not serious forget all this we are giving all this notes all these questions only for serious neat aspirants and if you are serious you will do this if you are not serious you will not do this that is my guarantee that is my guarantee okay the next thing is your vedant learning center students if you think if you are a neat aspirants for your next year neat 2025 all of you will be some of you will be if you want to learn from the offline centers if you learn or want to learn from the offline center which has unlimited you know what do i say doubts unlimited doubts smart clickers and so many futuristic technologies in education that is all the way go here right well, my name is given in uh, mc my name is given here seventh moving to eighth you can change it to whatever you moving to your neat dropper and type here which city which city we want to visit and just click here do you have you visited center yes and submit done so if you want to learn from the offline center the go to the description go join the offline center today you will have amazing your one year journey will be set one year journey will be set here the next thing i want all of you to tell is which i have always been telling you is magic kit i don't know why still not some of you are not utilize this some of you still not utilize this i don't know why but i know some of you are utilizing i know who is utilizing we get a notification every single time when someone uses we get a notification we know who is utilizing this that is sample papers can you see syllabus syllabus previous year papers year wise and code wise year wise and code wise paper see question paper 2017 code a download just click on download see done this is your neat exam paper for your 2017 code b see here code b paper open biology section i am opening because i am see biology section see questions are here decrease in blood group uh, blood grouping uh, blood question see, see can you see questions so many questions are there later on you should not complain that sir we are not solved enough of questions students more than this you will never find any questions anywhere no you will not find questions anywhere don't worry so that is us 
that is us that is us we are giving you every single content for free on youtube be it the sample papers ncert solutions pyqs test mock test every single thing on the channel but what is and what is what what does you need to do you need to do is use of all this that's all all of you you need to use this other than this other than this we cannot tell you more than this right more is we cannot tell you so all the best students this chapter is officially over pedigree analysis yes i think whatever i have written is correct i think i, I, I if i remember my notes what i have written is correct if not i will just double cross it i'll double check it if it is correct i will pin it in the comments i'll pin it in the comments if it is correct okay so but i want your comments on today's video like the video right now first of all and also comment in today's video how was principles of inheritance we spoke we almost did the class for four and a half hours right every single topic i wrote down yes last topic that is your uh, disorders which i had uh, i had printed notes because that would take a lot of time to write it but students please download these notes and make your own notes from these notes so with that being said i will go right now your job is continuing my job is over your job will continue so until then thank you so much students bye bye take care all of you bye bye take care so which this is a dominant recessive uh, preeta i have written um, okay i should have made up next time i'll make a flow chart and give you i should have made a flow chart no so for this what you should what yes i'll check the uh, this thing what you need to do for your pedigree analysis not pedigree analysis for this all the diag uh, diseases is on the every single disease i've written which is dominant which is recessive make a flow chart for that also make a flow chart for that also it'll be easier it will be easier okay it'll be easier close and thank you i already spoke about this learning center thank you so much students i have to find how to save these notes i have to find i have to call gopi kamam and tell how to save these notes if i don't save these notes gone okay so with that say thank you so much students bye bye take care all of you and good night